Hey, this show is presented by Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com slash dangle to receive 20% off your next purchase and free shipping. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Canada's Sportsbook. S-D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! Three. Three. Three there, Mr. Palat, man. Boy, that was a that was a Palat of goals that got called back, wasn't it? How does it feel to be a loser? Yeah. I, yeah. How does it feel to suck? Yeah. I've, been, I've enjoyed my 13-game stint as a Devils fan. <laughs> oh, you're done completely. No, no. No, no. no, no. Well, I, sorry. 13-game winning streak as a Devils fan. I've been a Devils fan since beginning mm-hmm. of time. Birth. And we all believe that. Since months, as the kids used to say. Yes. Mm. Um, but... The I told September you podcasts are not on the internet. Nope, <laughs> they're not. I told you that I would wear devil stuff until the devil's lost. Yeah. Oh no! Oh, he's taking it off. Oh no! Uh oh! It's okay. It's, it's a, a medium. Oh, it's oh. a medium. It's just a oh, black. it's just a shirt. It's just oh, a shirt. Okay. Oh. I'm sorry. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Why I don't am have... I relieved and disappointed? Yeah. And yeah. So, to our wonderful Andre Palat Devils jersey. We'll start wearing you again the next time the Devils go on a winning streak of more than five games. How's that sound? I, li- I like that it has three points. One, two, three. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to hang you. How does it feel to win a game you lost 4 2? Long may it rest. Here's how it feels. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> can't do that. That's bullying, Jesse. You can't knock my jersey off. So, listen. Um, the Devils. <laughs> Shit. I just dropped the jersey on the floor. <laughs> That's what it deserves. This is Jesse's fault. That's what it deserves. This is Jesse's fault. How? I didn't lose. Listen, listen. What I didn't lose the Devils yesterday. Let's let's talk about this because really, the the game isn't even about the Leafs. The game was oh, no. the Devils versus the refs. Uh, the Devils and their fans no, versus the refs. The Devils versus the correct calls in the rule book. Depends who you ask. Yeah. So I, w- I want to talk about this. Can we go through all three? Because mm-hmm. I would like to break each of them down. Sure. Is there? Do we have screenshots? Could we possibly grab them or no? We I don't can. Need to. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go to sure. the let's let's talk about what we remember from the first one. As Jesse's pulling up the image, and obviously, if you're listening, yeah. you're not going to be able to see this. But Steve, yeah. describe <laughs> the first goal. It sucks because both Leaf goals were great. Absolutely. Like legitimately really well, nice but goals. But they don't they're not, not even worth talking about. They don't even matter. Okay, so the first goal. Let's talk about the first goal. Nathan Bastion is battling in front of the Leafs net. Um I'm surprised he had the energy uh, the energy to battle uh because he spent all morning talking shit. What did he say? He said, oh, it's, it's here. Wait, let me, I know, let me I know. find it's, the exact it's, it's quote. No, the Devils media has been asking the guys with the numbers on each win streak what they think is going to, if they oh. if this win is important to them. I heard you bring it up in the LFR, and I saw in, in, in I think it was pregame, they talked about it a little because he had that quote. So they've been, That's pest- clever. They've been pestering the guys. Oh, because Bastion's number 14. Yes. So they're like, is this win a big win to you? You're number 14. And they did it with, uh, who's 13? Is it Hughes? He sure. He, sh- he sure was like, this win is huge. I'm 13, blah, blah, blah. So then next game, they asked Bastion, and then he went really hard at it. Mm-hmm. So then oh. this is his quote. Well, he talked about it. Uh, no, read little, the quote. Well, I, I don't have it on my phone. Oh, you don't. I, I, you I think I deleted it after oh, last okay. night. But it was basically, I think he said something along the lines of, the Leafs are a bunch of bullshit, and I hate them, <laughs> and fuck them. Adam, just, can you just go? And, and I can't believe that he said that. I I'm didn't like that he said that. Uh, I thought it was mean that he said that. Did you think that was mean? It was mean that he said that. <laughs> I'm looking for about the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> I didn't like that he said that. <laughs> okay, can I, can I, I can't I, find it. I, I can't it. find okay. it. Here we go. Here so right. so I've stopped Stalin. looking for the clip, and now I've got this quote. Uh, this was from Ryan. Can't pronounce his last Novazinski. name. Novazinski. Ryan said, uh, New York Jersey Devils forward Nathan Bastion on the Maple Leafs. If there's any team in the league that I'd want to beat, it would probably be these guys. So yeah, 14 would be nice. Get absolutely wrecked there, clown shoes. Woo! Now he's from Kitchener, so he might have grown up a Leaf fan. Is he yes. actually? Yeah. That's yeah. hilarious. But the, the main story is he's number 14. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that context. So I liked that it was cheeky, but I had to, I had to take it there. So anyway, he's battling in front. And Matt Murray, I believe, is screened. 
and Nathan Bastion's skate is making contact with Matt Murray's skate. Matt Murray needed to get over to where Bastion was. Was he trying to do that? I don't know. Would he have successfully done it? I don't know. But did he have the opportunity to? Yeah, Jesse's finding it right now. I'm watching it again. Why is it Marner who's boxing him out right there? Yeah. How I, did that end I up? I forgot that it was Marner in front of the net doing all the dirty work. That's very weird. And interesting because there was a, a goalie interference review earlier this season where it was uh, it was actually deemed a goal because they said Marner shoved the player into mm-hmm. uh, whoever the Leaf goalie was that night. So so to get to the goaltender interference part, right? They're fighting each other. Well, so they're 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 his his skate is making contact with Matt Murray's skate, and I don't n- think this is the rule, but the rule doesn't matter. Like Leafs fans, Devils fans, can we have a middle ground here mm-hmm. that goalie interference is so open to interpretation that the rule doesn't matter? That's that's how I have it. For me, I think it might have been a goal had it gone straight in, but it hit the guy making contact with the goalie, and you can't have that. And I think also the fact that the shot was on that side where Murray was trying to push to. Right. Like the shot went in on the, it would be his left side of the pad. Had it gone in on the right, it maybe wouldn't have mattered, right? We've seen evidence of that not mattering. Right, but I think in this instance, because I think they take every instance in its own vacuum, because yeah. every call is just whatever that guy at the time is thinking. They I make think, it up on an individual basis. The yeah. logic yeah. there yeah. is that like, Matt Murray needs to push to the left side if he were to actually physically make that play. His skate is touching the player who's in the blue paint on the left side where the puck is. Now You could convince me either way. Yeah. That he yes. Didn't, he didn't <laughs> it's, a pro- have- it's a probable no. It, it's a probable no, yeah. but it's not like a 10 out of 10 no. It's like a 6 out of 10. If you had said, yes, there was a little interference there, but he wouldn't have stopped it anyway, I'd be like, yeah, I believe you. Yeah. yeah. 100%. I think that was going in. I think that, that was, was going, going in. in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and I think that that's, you know, that 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 part of it sucks because I, I do think... um I do think you're sort of like if you're a Devils fan, like we were. If this had been the Leafs and we were on a 13 game win streak, I would feel by that goal, I'd feel a little jobbed right now. Mm-hmm. But not as much as the next one. So let's discuss. Yeah, let's discuss the next goal, which is uh, linked to the Leafs forever and ever. Amen. David Severson scoring, I believe. Was right? it Severson? Was it Severson? Yeah, I don't know who it was who scored. All I know is it was Thomas Tatar. Yeah, who did the little flyby behind the net and knocked over Matt Murray. So, so, awesome. so made the paddle safe. So, so Matt Murray, what's he doing? What's he doing, Matt Murray? Well, he's not tending the goal. Right. Is, is so he's that's what he's not cycling doing. the puck behind the net. Although yeah. he does a good job of it. Um, yeah. And what he, what I saw with this goal is Matt Murray cycles the behind the net. Thomas Tatar comes in behind now. Usually you don't want to go in and behind like the way that Thomas Tatar does here, because really you could have just cut in front of the net and actually it's a better angle. But what happens is Matt he, Murray, he actually scores the goal. He tipped it. I oh, think. he did. Matt Murray, though, is going back to his net and Thomas Tatar very quickly runs out of room. Yes. Like Thomas Tatar is trying to get out of the way because you do see him slide. Look, watch. He'll move to the right. And Matt Murray, see, he's see, he's trying to move to the right. Can't move to the right because Matt Murray bumps into him. You, and it, you really, could, the, po- the point of contact there is Matt Murray. Yeah, you could argue he takes a pretty wide swoop. Yes, he shouldn't have been behind the net in the first place because it doesn't make sense for the play. Like, I think he, what he was waiting on, and he could be forgiven for this, is a goaltender not tending the goal and fucking it up. Well. And then he could go and dig for the puck. Here's here's my question. Is there something written in the rules that says if a goalie is out of their net to play the puck, you have to go on a certain side of them? I haven't seen that. Like with traffic? I don't know. Like, because I, listen, you got to protect goalies more than you protect other players. However, I watch this. I don't think you can, I think two things can be true. I don't think you can purposefully make contact with a goalie. I also think both players are uh, entitled to that ice. Yeah. I, it's like an F1. That's your racing line. That's your line. Yeah. Right? That's his line. I get the only argument is Tatar saw the situation and Murray didn't. So the onus is on Tatar. But what's Tatar going to do at that point? He move, doesn't know where Matt Murray's going to go. Right. 
I mean, he doesn't really have Russell. much of a choice at that point. He took the wrong way. path. Yeah, he I did. And I also think, like, incidental contact with the goalie is still goalie interference. Yeah. I, I see. That's but how that's the rule in book the crease, is. though. That's in no, the crease. Even, like, a, a big contact like this that leads to a goal, that's still, that's just how they call it. You don't want plays like that to be okay because you don't want guys just trucking goalies. I don't <laughs> want this play to not be a goal. I, well, I listen. What? If this were a leaf, <laughs> if this were the Leafs, I would be really upset. So okay, there there's a difference here. Um, Matt Murray gets up and at least tries to make a save. There's there's a goal that I I shan't be unupset about from a few years ago mm -hmm. against the Kings, and I think it was in Toronto. Jonathan Quick got hit at least three Mississippi before the puck goes in the net. And he quits. He quits. He just on laid the on the ground. Not even laid on the ground. Like got up to complain to the ref. Like wild play is very still going on. And he's just like, no, 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 it's no Blow goal. It's dead. Blow what it's do you dead. mean it's no goal? The goal hasn't been scored yet, John. And he just completely quits on the play. Murray at least tries. Like I, I'm still upset about the quick one because, you know, the conversation about, uh, uh, if he would have stopped it or not. Well, he didn't even try. Quick didn't even try. Murray at least tries, but this is the one I'd be particularly upset about as a Devils fan because producer Drew, who I'm starting to realize has a leaf, a, a, a me like memory for Avalanche stuff, uh, there was an almost identical thing that happened between the Devils and the Avalanche. The Devils goalie, I don't remember who it was that night, um, was behind the net. One of the Avs does a flyby, knocks him over. One of them takes a shot. It goes in. They review it. It's a goal. It's a near identical it's because play. he's left the crease. Yeah, but it's a. But they're both the same. I know what you're saying, and this yeah. is why. So I don't remember that instance. Obviously, I don't Me watch neither. Avs hockey Here, I'll, that closely. I'll send it to Jesse. So but we but can I, both I, see it. I want to tell you. I want to explain my opinion on this one, and and I know oh. Jesse, you'd completely disagree. But no, I, I'm, I'm surprised. Well, I think for this one. Because again, you got to step outside yourself and think, okay, like I, I think for sure you're probably calling back two of those three goals last night. This one to me should have been a goal because I don't want to be in an NHL where it's not. This is what does accidental that contact. It wasn't like Tatar came in and, you know, Thomas Tatar, the goon that he is, threw a <laughs> fucking elbow at the back of Matt Murray's head. He was trying to move out of the way. And I think if you're going to judge every situation based on... Uh, not last time. We're just going to judge every situation separately like we've never seen this before, which is how the NHL tends to do this in the video review room. Then I would look at the context of the situation and think, I see Thomas Tatar trying to get out of the way of Matt Murray. They bump each other. Shit happens in hockey, especially when you leave the crease. And I think if we're going to leave gray in the rules for this, it's not black and white. If we're going to leave gray in the rules, you have to allow for incidental contact outside of the crease. With the goalie? Outside of the crease, yes. If the goalie leaves the crease, that means that they are allowed to be incidentally contacted. It doesn't mean that Matt, you know, pull a Matt Cook and just slam a goalie's head into the wall. And well, I don't know if Matt Cook ever did that, but yeah. he would have. I'm talking about Shea Thomas Weber Tatar, who's probably never been suspended, who only scores goals and never plays anything physical. Are you kidding me? I think for this... This guy's trying to get out of the way. Matt Murray's skating back to his, his net where he should have stayed the whole damn time anyway. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think... Tatar made a mistake when he went behind the goal, but the reality of the situation is, is it goaltender interference? Is he interfering with the goaltender's ability to goal goaltend? And I think once you leave the crease, you're not goaltending anymore. Uh, I just, I just sent Jesse the clip. The avalanche player can see what's happening. Okay, the devil's, the devil's goalie cannot. That's Mackenzie Blackwood. Blackwood. I think it's Cogliano on the avalanche. Uh, he takes the same path Tatar does. And I count it. Where he cuts in the near oh, side. That's Dude, ridiculous. They're that identical. Should be a goal. They're identical plays. It should be a goal. No, it was. And that's what I mean. That should be a goal. That play should be a goal every time. And it was. So why then was like listen, I like, don't think Tatar this didn't hit him. Goal. He didn't even graze him with his you know, shoulder. He's trying to skate out of the way and their skates clip each other. This is what the NHL does. Adam thinks it should be a goal. Jesse doesn't. They called it a goal. Right? Yeah. So the ruling is a goal. The NHL, in these situations with goalie interference, with penalties, with supplemental discipline, like suspensions, 
they repeatedly over and over again set a precedent and then don't stick to it and then just get rid of it like what's the point of ever making a decision <laughs> what, well yeah seriously, what's the point? In, in, in law you have a precedent setting case and then every case is based off of that why are you right? making your job so hard nhl you have it it's right there it's right there there, there should be a folder <laughs> there should be a little folder that the refs can bring up on their little Tamagotchi screen that they have. It's so small. Please get a monitor. Get a monitor for five thousand dollars. You could get monitors for the entire. Well, let's just give an iPad. Like Amazon. No, but they they do have an iPad. But like, dude, it's not a big enough screen. Mm. It's get a bigger screen. It's a multi billion dollar league. Act like it. You're semi professional. Ah. Anyway, they set a precedent, and they just threw it away like i'm a leaf fan i want them to win there's no difference between that play and what happened last night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's no difference yep i've always been under the impression that you can't touch the goaltender like if, if you're a skater and you're coming around the back of the net and you run into the goaltender that's the skater's issue it is the goaltender is he's not as there's a little there's a little bubble around him like you can't you can't touch him and if, if you touch the goaltender and then there's a goal I think you have interfered with the goaltender on an instance where a go where he should be goaltending. So and I think that's that's how I always interpret goaltender interference where don't touch the goalie. And and you would be right if the NHL stuck to that. Cuz I think that's sure. the intention. But you know, you look at the way Dominic Hasek used to play. If you came in on like a 2 on 0 with hat with Dominator, he would charge you. Oh yeah. And 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 then throw out the 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 pads and you'd fall face first over them. Right, that's how. Yeah, I don't think the rules of the '90s apply to no, but what's you, happening right but now. But that's why that's where the rules were made. But it was fun. That's yeah. when the rules were made for this stuff. That's when they they decided all this. Uh, sure, but I think the modern game now, like post lockout, post two lockouts, post strike, post whatever Gary Benton wants to shut down the league. I think right now, I interpret it as you can't touch the goalie. So then, the, then the goalie is literally if if hockey is chess, the goalie is queen, and yeah. in in under that system. The goalie should be able to stick handle the puck up the ice and nobody can touch him. That's not. No, that's, but that's, that's, but that's, but that's what we're getting into. That's not what anybody said. I no, know, but. Well, what if somebody <laughs> trips him? Oh, well. Or what if, some, what if somebody gets in the way accidentally and they knock each other I at think, center ice? All we have is what about us. <laughs> I know. We I, have to. Adam, you, you argue against this is, arguing like that all the time. This is. This is you no, would be so upset if I'm somebody made you, an argument I, listen, like that. I, I understand that, but I think we have to understand the rules here. <laughs> no, are, are like, the goalies touchable or untouchable? That's, a, that's terrible, Adam. And I would like to acknowledge. Well, we've just, Jesse, would, we've just seen an example with Colorado and what was the other team? New, New Jersey. Jersey. Yeah, with New Jersey. <laughs> we just seen the example of where that is a goal. Yeah. yeah. So, it's, it's is the goal, so here's the thing. Make it so. If the goalie's untouchable, make it so. But I don't think a goaltender or any player should be untouchable outside of the crease. If the goalie's in the crease, tending the goal, untouchable. Let's acknowledge guys who are the problem. Matt Murray was not trying to make contact. No. Mm -hmm. Thomas Tatar wasn't trying to make contact. Thomas Tatar wasn't trying to make contact. Mackenzie Blackwood was not trying to make contact. Uh, Andrew Cogliano was not trying to make contact. But the key thing is, in both of these plays, neither goalies were trying to, whoa, whoa, like, mm -hmm. game the system. Yeah. So yeah. let's acknowledge the patron saint of flopping, Mike Smith, <laughs> oh, who was the oh, king yeah. of this shit. Mm -hmm. Going behind the net, a player does a flyby, and he, like, sticks a, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and he would always fight. Nope. Here's here you go. Teammates clean this shit up. Yeah. Yeah. He was the he original was binner. The oh, yeah. absolute patron saint of that shit. You know who we used to get uh, who was a pain in the ass too? He knew he couldn't get touched was Patrick Waugh. If you went behind the, the net, he'd just throw an elbow at you. See, I think the difference was he he's um there's something the matter with him and <laughs> yeah. he wanted to fight. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, he was an intense man there's, for sure. He was very I just, intense. He I, used to listen, scream at his goal. I understand why it was called back. I just don't know if I want the NHL to be in a place where that isn't a goal. I think I think if you're talk if you're looking at the context of the situation, the player is involved. Matt Murray is not trying to get in the way. Thomas Tatar is not trying to get in the way, but they do bump into each other. And that happens on a hockey ice surface. And you can make that judgment call on video review. If you think for a moment, the player hit the goalie on purpose, mm -hmm. it, you can't have that. But 
I don't think either instance involves a player no, trying to make contact. Even Leaf fans are knowing. Like Any Leaf fan you talk to, they're like, do you think Tatar tried to take out Murray Skates? And unless they're legitimately homer for life, everything Leafs all the time, uh, they're going to tell you, yeah, there's no way. So here's my here's my point. I should be pro- maybe I'm maybe I I was exaggerating on the argument about goalie just carrying it up the ice, but Same the thing. NHL needs to pick. <laughs> the, well, what I if mean, a, what if a goalie skates down the ice and interferes yeah. with another goalie? Adam, what they if he brought, like, no, what if it was World War II <laughs> and he brought a gun onto the ice? <laughs> yeah, and then he had the, the earth. He had to pack his musket <laughs> and he shot him. <laughs> what about that? Yeah. Huh? What are you gonna call that goalie? All I'm saying is the what NHL. If there's a cryogenically oh frozen God. goalie, and they come back to life with their leather skates. Walt Disney comes back cryogenically frozen. His brain is a new hockey player. Yo, okay, <laughs> I'm just saying to the NHL, pick one because you can understand, and I can understand. We all can understand why Devils fans were pissed after that. Yeah, it's happened before. And I don't know, personally, I don't know if I want to be in an NHL where that's not a goal. The, I think it should be a goal, Those guys. are two different things you're talking about, though. You're asking, where one conversation is, ask the NHL to call the rule book as they always call it. You have precedence here. Why didn't you call it the same way? Yep. And the yep. other one's you, uh, your interpretation of the rule that you'd like the NHL to call. Mm-hmm. Those are two different conversations. Right. You know? Yeah. Consistency so, from the NHL is impossible. I think it should be a goal because they've already established it's a goal. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. And, and if they, then if they go in and they go, we're changing the rule now, yeah. this is no longer a goal, then it's a new precedent. Yeah, but they've picked two yeah. precedents here. So then let's get to the <laughs> third goal. Because it's the precedent. Ha! Get it? Whoa! Well, oh, this woo! one is, oh, just a bunch of fun. I, I mean, love this one. This one is a goal. Uh, sorry, this one is not a goal. It's no. Yeah. Out of all the no goals, this one is the least a goal. Yeah. So uh, this one is very, very clear, but you With can understand. With an asterisk, though. With an asterisk? No, no, what were you going to say? Well, you can understand why Devils fans were a little bit ticked at this. Oh, it's the third one. That's nuts. Yeah, and people were like, they just went on a 13-game road or win streak. How can they be mad? Because fans get mad. So. What, ma- what game matters the most? The one you're in. Here's, that's true. Here is what Devils fans were arguing, as far as I saw, right? Uh, I'm not saying you're all one person, this gelatinous blob with uh, one hive mind. I don't remember who the Devils player was. They kick it. They kick it. And this was a point that I saw made uh, a bunch of times. They kicked it. Um, it's Eric it Holla. Yeah. They <laughs> kick it parallel to the goal line. Right. They're not trying to kick it into the net. What Holla, to me, is very clearly trying to do is to kick the puck loose to a teammate. Or to himself. Or to himself, but no, I think it was, it's to, it was to an open teammate. Who the fuck was in front of the net? Who is? Oh, look at it! Look at it! Here, here, play it. It's so. It's, yeah. Oh, oh, oh! Is that Bastion again? It was fourteen. It was Bastion. <laughs> yeah. No way! All right, here, wait. So it's been kicked. The puck is trickling, trickling, oh. trickling, <laughs> trickling, trickling. It's in. I don't think Bastion touches it. Now here's the amazing thing. Had Halla. Oh, no, 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 sorry. The reason Halla doesn't succeed in getting the puck to Bastion is he kicked it, and then it hit a leaf, and it went in. Bastion is... It's Robertson. It's Robertson. Bastion is an inch. An inch from tipping this thing in himself. Had he done it, good goal. Uh Totally fine. But he didn't do it. You can kick the puck wherever you want. As long as it's not in the net. So I have to ask about that too. Why? I, I want to I walk it back. Let's go back to the, uh, the formation of the universe and God created man. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why is the rule? Just answer this one question. Why is the rule you can't kick it in the net, Steve? I think it has to do with safety because like, okay, in that situation, there's a bunch of feet there. Uh, Matt Murray is down. You know, there could be another player down. You don't want... Eric Halla or any attacking player punting at the yeah. puck and swinging their knife shit. Slicing it it someone. would get to a point where the guys who are usually in front of the, the net, the, the plugs, the Steve Dangles of the world, Absolutely. are sitting in front of the net, swinging their foot. Yes. That, it would get to that point. A thousand yeah. percent. You know, if you don't oh, but skill. it wouldn't get to the point where the goal is carrying the puck up the ice and no one can touch him, huh? Right. Oh, yeah. we, oh, just a bunch of butcher knives around the net what trying to get the puck in. If a goalie kicks it in, yeah. goalies are allowed to use their yeah. feet, are they not? <laughs> now, what 
if a goalie made a toe save, <laughs> it bounced off the boards and went in. No goal. No, no goal. goal. Yo, that's bullshit. No that goal. That should 100%. Oh, that's going to happen. Okay, no, so it wasn't. It, it, was it, it wasn't. Thanks to Adam it Wilde. wasn't a distinct kicking motion. Read the rule book. Yeah. Damn. So here's a here's what. Save's not a kick. Yeah, that you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Idiot, you uh, fucking dummy. Hey, dumb. wow. <laughs> he got it. He um, fucking got it. So, so then let, let's let's. So the reason I ask you that is we need to establish that now it is right. okay to redirect a puck in with the, if you keep your skate on the ground and it happens to go off your skate and in the net, nothing wrong or with that. Or if you lift it a little bit. So I, I want to ask this about the NHL: if it's dangerous to do around the goalie, you shouldn't be allowed. To why is it allowed at all? You can. We've seen players. We've literally seen this. We've seen players get a breakaway with no stick mm -hmm. and you're just allowed to kick the thing up the ice like a soccer ball mm -hmm. and it's fine. Totally I fine. don't think that's dangerous to anybody around them. No, they're on a break. What if, what if, some, well, what if people have fallen in the corners and they're kicking away? I don't know. Which they do. Ever, they do all the time. I, don't I know. Think, but uh, if it was dangerous, we'd see dangerous things come out of it. We don't practice this at our little stick and puck, Jesse, but you're yeah. not allowed to skate as fast when you're kicking the thing. So I think their <laughs> breakaway would end in someone catching them. Yeah. It didn't in Dominic Moore's case. No. Still funny. He went to the net and then he couldn't score. <laughs> Still funny. Um, but that's no, that's crazy though. So had Hollick booted that thing as hard as he could to bastion sick bastion got it put it in that's a goal if hall up boots it directly into the net it's no goal mm -hmm. if he boots it parallel to the net and it bounces off something and goes in it's no goal if he kicked it toward his own goalie <laughs> yeah. and it hit off of something and went into the leaf net yeah no goal yeah i'd like to see that I would also now, like to see that. So let me ask you this. If I'd like to see the goalie carry the puck up the, net, the, up the ice. I also want to see so that. If the, so we've established what you, where you can kick it and where you can't. The reason I want to ask this, okay. and this is why I get it. The asterisk makes sense to me why Devils fans are pissed. Because he is trying to kick it as a pass. It goes off a leaf and goes in. So I, to me, you could make the argument as soon as you kick and it goes off somebody else, the kick is now negated. I I honestly thought that it was a goal because I thought that was the rule, but it's not. And I think that that probably should be the case. Uh, hockey is so chaotic that, like, uh, that's a dangerous precedent mm -hmm. to set. Like, that's especially, true. dude, there's, there's four, like, forget what team they play for. There's four men. And one made a, human made a is flesh and bone, and one of them's on the ground. One of them, two of them, right now. Yeah, the and goalie. in in the screenshot you got, is it on? Is it on the yeah. TV? There you go. Um, like hockey is so chaotic that you could kick a puck from where Halla is, and it'll go into the crease, and mm -hmm. it's got a really good chance of hitting something and mm -hmm. going in. I don't, I don't like that precedent. Yeah, I don't like that precedent. So. I'm very cool with that not being a goal. I just like to point out these silly rules involving pucks and feet. Okay. All right. So at least are we agreed that probably if that were to happen again, at least one of those would have counted? Most likely the first one? I will say the devil should have won that game. Second one. Sorry. sorry. Devil should have won that game because it should have been 2-2. That means it goes to overtime. That means and it's, it's an automatic, automatic L. Yeah, and that Dougie Hamilton automatic. goal was good. It was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought the here's when I thought the Leafs were truly cooked. When there was a minute left, they fire it down the ice and it goes off the post. I'm like, this is going to be on the highlights oh, the tomorrow. Geo shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Like I'm like, this is because it's the Leafs. They're coming back to score now. I has to lost it. This this game. It was a great game. I I I tune into every game just going. All right, show me something. And like, I, you know, sometimes there's a special one on the schedule where I'm just dialed from the moment it starts, but you can't do that for every game. So I'm like, all right, show me something. By the end of this game, I was as invested as I've been in any game in the last three years. It felt, it felt like the playoffs. <laughs> oh, it was awesome. It was I mean, they shouldn't have won. What was great. <laughs> oh no, they great. shouldn't have won for sure. And I, I think what was cool about it is like. There was, you know, unfortunately with the NHL, there's a, there is 20 or 30 games each year for every team that it's like, I, we're just going at this for two points. And that's the grind of the NHL schedule. But a lot of the time you get these, sorry, some of the time you get these storylines. And, and the storyline is the Devils beat the Leafs in overtime last week. They are on a 13 game win streak. They want to, they want to get franchise record 14. 
The Leafs want revenge from last week. They want to end the winning streak. There is something to be fought over other than just the two points. And I'm sorry, but NHL players are humans. They're not always going to be like fucking amped for two points all the time. Yeah. You know, it, it is sometimes that extra little bit. There was an elevated level of play. Obviously, the fans were into it. I have to I do have to ask about this. <laughs> it was funny hearing the difference, the differential of the quotes last night after the game yeah. talking about the beer. So, you know, oh, yeah. the Leaf players were talking about how dangerous it was. And it's and and they're right. And the Devils players were saying, well, I don't mind it so much. Like we got equipment on. We'll be fine. Uh, but it's probably not for the best. That's what a couple uh, yeah, no. a couple players said. Who that. said no. that? There was a Devils player that said that. He's like, yeah, I got equipment on it. Like, I'm not, you know, obviously they're not encouraging it. It's not necessarily about you getting hurt. Man. Right. Is it <laughs> disgusting? Is it, is it disgusting? Yeah, man. They're throwing like soft drinks. Yeah, no, and I think there, there should be a rule is just don't throw shit at people. Well, it should be. Yeah, you're, 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 you're an adult. Don't yeah. throw food at somebody. We've seen that in every city, though. I think it's unfair for people to be like, Devils fans are the only ones who've ever done this. Like 100%. Toronto fans threw beer on the field when with the Jose Batista stuff. Uh, yeah, what hit a baby? It hit a, a fucking baby. moron. Yeah, yeah. like we're, I think it should be don't do this as yeah. an adult. Don't throw beer cans yeah. at people. Yes, across all everything. I think, I think Jay, actually, these fans a couple times actually. The Orioles as well. I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, some shitty fans. Yeah. yeah. No. So don't like the thing is don't do it. Yeah. Um, I'm also. I have to be honest. I'm not terribly surprised it happened. You no. you have a 13 game winning streak, and these are fans. Yeah. And remember, it's a crowd, and there's a crowd effect, and there's energy and whatever. I'm not totally surprised after three called back goals. I'm not surprised that things were thrown. I'm so, not. So the people camera, lose their minds. The camera did not catch the moment it started, as far as I know. But the way I read it started, and I don't know if this is true, is a Devils fan, and I 100% approve of this because it's very, very funny, threw a hat. Mm -hmm. Oh, because it was a hat trick. A hat trick. Oh, that's funny. That's, and, a, that's dark humor. And someone saw, yeah, I'm also mad. Let's throw shit on the ice. <laughs> uh, and it was one thing of pop or one thing of beer. And then it was chicken fingers, apparently. <laughs> people, <laughs> people just throwing thousands of dollars worth of arena food onto the ice. It's very expensive. Yeah, which Pedersen is like three beers. got hit with a bag of candy last night, too. Who? Um, oh, yeah, in the Vancouver Elias game. Pedersen. Oh, I yeah. was like, there's no Pedersen on no, that in, in the Vancouver game. Okay, yeah. so I missed that because I was working on a couple of videos mm -hmm. last night. That I saw some things got thrown on the ice. What happened? Yeah, I don't I don't know the context of why. Oh. But uh yeah. Other throwing, than they're mad because the team stinks. Yeah. But, but people were throwing stuff there too. Oh boy. Not great. Yeah. Yep. I think first ever incidents of things getting thrown onto the ice for a win streak of ten or more. <laughs> <laughs> but like the most unique uh, context I've seen mm -hmm. someone. So I last night was tweeting about um, the 98, 99 season. And it okay. made me realize I'm old. <laughs> the 98, 99 season okay. was the season ruined. And I mean, ruined by toe in the crease reviews. Mm -hmm. Remember, the crease was a different size. It was bigger. Mm -hmm. It was bigger. It, it was did, a big did, half pizza. It, it wasn't flat at the ends. Yeah, it was. And if you had a toe in the crease, they had a crack down that year. No goal. And every game, I swear, had at least one review. It ruined the video game as well. Mm -hmm. Because we're talking oh, yeah, about. Yeah, you'd have goals called back in the video game. You'd have goals called back in the video game, but it's 1999 video games. <laughs> so <laughs> you take a shot from the blue line, it would go in. There's no one around the net. They'd be like, oh, we're reviewing it. And you're like, oh, well, it's going to count. And then it'd be like, no goal. And you had no control over that. And you're player. like, what the? F oh, okay. Sure. I'll just try to score again, I guess. It, it ruined an entire year of hockey. And then the Stanley Cup winning goal. Guess what? Toe in the crease. They didn't care. Here you go. It ruined a whole year. Someone tweeted me that uh, they went to a game in 98. I think it was Leafs and Blues. Mm -hmm. where one team, I don't remember if it was the Leafs or Blues, had three goals called back in the same game. I'm sure someone will have the stat mm -hmm. if it has happened before. I can't think of it ever happening. Ever. I can't remember that. I vaguely remember like maybe two. Mm -hmm. And likely it, it doesn't happen much again. 
Three in one game is wild. That's a lot. <laughs> That's that a lot. Wild. Yeah. And you know, the New Jersey Devils brass are on the phone with everybody today. No, they have a twenty four hour cool down rule. You're not actually after the game. I anything happens that. in the vein in the game, you're not allowed to call the NHL until twenty four hours later. And I think oh, there's wow. like a penalty associated with that because they want to make sure that they don't have general managers biting their ears off the game day after a game. So. That's, if it happens at 9.45 that night, you can't call them really again until two days later. That is clever. Very clever. I would say the NHL did a very smart thing with that rule. Yeah. That is well, I, th I think you'd have a lot of GMs with a lot of fines. Oh, dude. Have you ever seen the camera on Kyle Dubas when the Leafs are losing? Oh. You want to be on the phone with that guy? No. <laughs> no, no way. No. Nope. No way. I don't, you think you're going to have a reasonable conversation with a bunch of ex-players and... <laughs> Who are bloodthirsty after no a game, way. right? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. I mean, I think it's a... Uh, it, listen, it was a fascinating game last night. The Devils are a great team. What a... Man. Like, they're a great team. I... Uh, they're too I'm, fast. I'm they're trying so fast. to think of a one-season turnaround that I've seen like that. Um, I, I also want to mention... Man. We, we talked about this before, so I'm rehashing something we talked about like three episodes ago. But guys... Mm -hmm. Not enough is being made of what Washington did with their two goaltenders this <laughs> offseason. Yeah, we've done this a couple of times. No, but like you saw Vanacek save at the end of the game with Tavares, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Like, I don't know what happened and why. Who's their goaltending coach? Tavares, Who by made the way, that call? Marner and Tavares are 14th and 15th in the entire league in scoring. And we're not talking about that enough because we're scarred and it's all about wins and losses. But Vanacek and Samsonov. We're talking uh, two very different goalies on two very different teams, and they're having very good seasons. And the Capitals go out and they spend big money on the Stanley Cup winning goalie, mm -hmm. and almost every night feed him to the actual Wolves. Well, they don't play any defense. They should maybe be having some conversations about that. Uh, right. Mitch's point streak continues. 14 games? 13 games? 14 yeah. games. Oh, it's longer than the Devils. It sure is. <laughs> yep. yep. Uh, Austin Matthews hasn't scored a goal this season on his forehand. No. I don't think that's true. No, it's true. They five on five. It. Five on five. Five on oh, five. Has not scored a, yeah. Five on five forehand goal. That was Chris Cuthbert. Yeah. Was, I was like, that's what makes Chris Cuthbert so special. He knows shit like that. Yeah. I've seen enough of Austin Matthews to confidently say something's wrong oh now i think you think he's um, hurt like i'm not overly concerned about it because he's playing good hockey but there's something preventing him from being special mm -hmm. and i don't know exactly what it is he's still like i think 30th in scoring he's got 21 points in 21 games so clearly busted <laughs> and hurt austin matthews is a point a game player mm -hmm. that's banana sandwich he's so good um but he's playing. He's playing. And Tavares is playing at a level that is maybe the best he's played as a Leaf. And he's scored 47 goals once. The Leafs have enough of a cushion that if they wanted Matthews to sit for a little bit, he could. So I'm not overly worried about whatever's ailing him because the Leafs don't appear to be overly worried about whatever's ailing him. Okay. Um. It would appear they have bigger fish to fry because they have no defensemen. Mm -hmm. So as a fan, I should be okay with Poppy. I mean, I watch him play and he's fine. It's honestly in the offensive zone where he's disappeared a little bit. Mm -hmm. But teams still guard him like he's, like he's the threat he was last year. He does have the shot still. Like I saw that. No, I saw it versus uh, Buffalo last Saturday. He has it. He For does sure. use and, it. And 100%. I saw it versus Vancouver as well when he scored that goal, uh, one of the, the comeback goals. I think it was the second goal. He's having but, an impossible time getting open. But it's interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because they, I wonder if they're compensating for something because they are putting him closer to the net on the power play a lot of the time too. They are. He's like playing in like Tavares territory. He's scoring differently. Can um, you do your Sid Six Arrow bumper? Bumper. <laughs> <laughs> so they've, they've moved him to Adam's point. They've moved the bumper spot to the bump closer to the net. Yeah. What spot? The bumper. <laughs> That's a good episode. Everybody go watch Bumper. Bumper. Um, <laughs> they've moved it closer to the, to the net, which I thought was interesting. It's a little different layout, but I don't think that really has to do with 
his abilities, you know? I think it's just a different strategy on the power play. I like Sandine on the point of the power play. Yeah, I'm over Riley? It's just fun. Yeah, it's just different. This is different. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not no, no, no criticism to Riley. Um, although um Keith took Willie off power play one. Mm-hmm. It was PP two. It was interesting watching uh or listening to the broadcast go, is he hurt? Nope. There he is on the bench. Yeah. Okay. I Yarn think croak it is. I think that Willie had a really shitty overtime on Monday and wasn't particularly sharp last night. And William Nylander is fabulously talented and is one of my favorite Leafs. But I think we've all watched him long enough to know he has two and three game streaks where he's, I don't know where his head's at. It's And they, they openly talk about that. You have to be hard on Willie. Uh, you do. Um, I love him. One of the most underrated players in the league, frankly. I think so. Um, he's one of the best offensive weapons in the league. One of, one of the most underratedly strong guys in the league. There was a play last night. I can't, or was it last night of the game before? Where I watched it and I audibly, like out loud, just went Willie, and it wasn't a <laughs> dumb play; it was a lazy. You talked to me like that, yeah, man. Adam. Like yeah, Adam, <laughs> and you just you got to smack him around every now and then, yeah. Um, <laughs> smack him around in terms of minutes, and that's what Keith does. And to Willie's credit, you smack him around. And he, you get his attention, and then he goes out the next game and gets two goals. I had that same response to a Kerfoot play, and I think it was on the transition that led to the kicked-in goal that got taken back, so it never became anything. But he did like a flyby while the Devils were leaving the Leaf zone. He takes the Dude. strangest fucking paths. Yeah, it, yeah, I don't know if, if anybody else noticed it, but the, who are, I forget who's bringing the puck out of the Leaf zone for the Devils to bring it up into into the neutral zone. And he just did a weird flyby yeah. and did a circle back to come back to the play. And then you'll see when they score the goal, Kerfoot's the last one coming back to the net. It's he's he's Him? just he's he moves so strangely around the ice. Him and Engvall move too fast for their own heads. Mm. Um, like they're moving so fast, and by the time they realize they need to do, make a sharp turn, it's they've gone way too far, and then they're turning like a boat. Um, but Kerfoot assist on the game winner <laughs> from Pontus Holmberg. Let's go, let's go, Pontus. I love a first NHL goal. It was great, oh, and it was a good goal. Shit. And uh, Mac Hollowell, here's my review. Barely noticed him. Good job. That's great. That's all you need. Especially against a team like New Jersey. Usually bad players get exposed against good teams, right? Yeah. And he, he, he wasn't bad. He had a very first NHL game game where every time he got the puck, he got rid of it and yep. scampered back. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yep. It looked but like they, he was but, playing hot potato. But they were oh, clean shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. <laughs> clean passes, though. Clean? Clean passes. Uh, he had one... I think he had one pin. Like, like Matt... Uh, oh, Martin, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Martin Marincin, every time the puck touched his stick, was oh, shit. Oh, fuck. And you never knew where it was going to go. Mm-hmm. That goal he scored against the Vancouver Canucks is still one of the funniest it's crazy. things ever. It's crazy. Because it was a tied game, and I just know someone in the locker room said, hey, you know what would be funny? <laughs> you know what would be a funny way to start the third is if Marty just said it's Marty time <laughs> and then he did and he scored and it was amazing it was amazing um, before we get to David uh huh. I would just like to uh, get some acknowledgement that I'm two for two on Leafs guaranteed win oh you're right absolutely you are. You are. I, the, absolutely. Philly, the Philly game after they come off that Anaheim game of course they're going out and they're beating Philly you know and then this game uh, after that terrible three on three Short 800 defensemen. Steve's going to play 7th D. He's their extra. I might. You know? And then I am right-handed. Leafs are going to go out and win it. Dude, and now they're without Jordy Ben. No. Oh, we don't know how for, for long. No, how, we don't. Right? Uh, okay. we, uh, let me check. Yeah. But mm-hmm. yeah, we, we don't know. So, uh, you know what? We'll get to Dave now, but we got more Leaf stuff actually to come up next. Sports Interaction, Canada's Sportsbook presents You Can Bet That with David Bastel. Must be 19 plus. Please play responsibly, Ontario only. Team Canada's odds against Croatia changed just a little bit with their performance against Belgium yesterday, but we're not going to get to that just yet. First, though, Dave, we need to talk about something else. New feature. What are we chatting about? 
Yeah, we're chatting about Minute Madness. It's sweeping the sports interaction site right now, Adam. Uh, it's, you know what, a lot of friends are asking me about this, and we've put out some really good instructional videos as well that we could see on socials and so forth. But it's it's very close, and, and how I compare it is to Kino, where you select when you think goals are going to be scored. We've introduced it for World Cup. It's going to be with hockey soon. It's going to be with football in a bit. So it, it basically is selecting numbers where you think goals will be scored. The odds are incredible too, Jess. You're going to really like this one because I know you're a big odds guy. If you nail three of them, it's 25,000 to one. It's, oh my it is God. Kind of like a lottery t- I, I know. I, I know. I know. It's just throw that loony down and then go, let's do it. Oh, let's nice. Do it. And it's, no, I, I wow. love my long shot bets. I've been doing on the Jesse Blake Sports Report. We've been, I've been doing parlays off the top. Great show, do, by the way. Great show. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Great do like, I'll do three or four leg parlays and I'll always try and hit either like 50 to one or 200 to one odds just so I can yes. go get <sighs> some ridiculous payout, you know? So this is crazy. Yeah. Have you? <laughs> done it and it's and i was one leg away last ah, time you know? uh, Not yet. yeah so yeah it's it and it's also ex- it's exclusive to sports interaction you can't get this bet anywhere else it's just like the pinata bets nobody else on the face of the earth does this for sports gaming it's it's pretty cool um it, it's it's you know they they address it as every minute counts and it really does because you sit there and you go okay 33rd minute there's a goal sometimes that means nothing to anybody but if you're betting that on minute madness it's like it's everything it's it's right. kind of cool it it kind of it you know a lot of people don't you know we follow canada and we follow different uh backgrounds that all of us come from which is great but when you're when you're watching that game that really means nothing to you this is the game to play uh, it, definitely check it out it's a lot of fun i love that i love that and listen m- minutes in soccer especially matter uh, TFC fans still have that Danny Dicchio chant every day at or every oh, game at 24 yes, minutes. Do. Yes, they do. And yes. he was the first guy to ever score for TFC. And they remember him every single game. And TFC fans know. So we've got obviously yesterday was a bit of a heartbreaker for Team Canada because they came in. They surprised the second ranked in the world Belgians. The game was amazing. It really oh, was yeah. like it was a spectacular soccer game. If Canada had a little more finish, I think they would have tied it. Um, what does it do to the odds versus Croatia on Monday? Well, uh, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday morning, sorry, by Sunday. the way. Oh, uh, Sunday. No, no, no problem. No problem at all. On on Monday, we'll know that Canada won. I'll tell you That's that. That's right. Um, yeah. No. <laughs> Dave. Dave, everybody. Um, you know what? You know what? Croatia is still slight favorites because they are one of those power rank teams. They're, they've usually been in the top 20 in FIFA rankings for some time. A couple years ago, they, they made it right uh, right to the end basically so it's an older team too um i I look at the result they had against morocco with a with a zero zero draw and i'm thinking hmm, if canada plays that same sort of effort against you know that they did with belgium with croatia it could be close croatia slight favorites 209 canada paying a respectable 340 at the beginning of the week that was closer to four so money accepting on canada to make this a lot more interesting than a lot of people may have thought to begin with it was an exciting one. So we'll, we'll check in with you again on Monday. Dave, thanks so much as always. Thanks, guys. Have a nice weekend. It's never too early to play holiday music, and it's never too early to start thinking about gifts, whether it's for a friend or the friend in your pants. Yeah, okay. Oh, all-time boom. low. You thousand percent at all-time low. You can, make it, uh, you can make it happen this season and be jolly with Manscaped, baby. Now, uh, do your little drummer boy a favor and yeah, use that lawnmower absolutely not. 4.0 no. to avoid another silent night in the bedroom. Oh, and look silent at this. Night. I have a brochure in my hands about some of the other products you can get. The Crop Mop Stay Fresh Wipes, the Clean Start Crop Cleanser, the Head to Toe Foot Duster, the Finishing Touch Refined Cologne, and the Plow 2.0, which is a superior safety razor with machine hmm. brass handle for better grip and zinc alloy head. Ooh. Provides you with gentle shave head. for extra smoothness. Jingle Balls was right there. You didn't have to do I'll that. I'll get to that. we got a long way to go for the holidays, oh but you don't, not at least to get your shopping in. So why don't you do this? Go to manscaped.com slash dangle. Use that promo code. Uh, it's dangle, by the way, D-A-N-G-L-E. Free shipping, 20% off. Hey guys, it's time to knock that new business idea out of the park with Shopify. Listen, I know it's the holiday season, but then you're going to start thinking New Year's resolution, right? If you look back at this year and these last couple of years and go, I need a change, this might be the way to do it. Forget the off-season work. Shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere 
Whether you're selling warm-ups or wall hangers, it's time to start selling with Shopify worldwide and join the platform simplifying e-commerce for millions of businesses worldwide. With Shopify, you'll customize your online store to your brand, discover new customers, and build the relationships you need with diehard fans, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that you're, was you're pretty cool. That was awful. Why is that awful? How did you not mention that stdpnshop.ca is built on Shopify? Is it? I built it on Shopify. It's on that. I that's didn't even the know back that. End that we use. There well, you go. <laughs> that, that should be what you lead with, Adam. I know. Come well, listen, on. And thanks to the we 20, love Shopify. Thanks to the twenty four seven support and uh, free on demand business courses. Shopify is on your team every step of the way. So if you want to sign up for a free free trial, go to shopify.com slash sdp. All lowercase. Again, it's Shopify.com slash STP to start selling today. Shopify.com slash STP. So easy to use. Even a moron like Jesse could use it. This guy. What an idiot. Uh, there's a couple things. I know we've got to talk about Connor Timmons, but there's one, a couple quick leaf things I do want to hit too. Jesse, I'm going to send you a, no. uh, a, a text here that I want you to bring up because I want to, I want to go into some fashion in a minute. Ooh. But um, the first thing I want to say is, Je- uh, Steve, you mentioned it. Marner and Tavares, number 16 and number 17 in total NHL scoring. Ah, uh, they got knocked down. Yeah, but you know what? That's not bad. I, nope. I just want to throw this out there for Leaf fans. You know, John Tavares has, took a lot of shit, especially last year, when he was coming off an absolutely brutal head injury and still scored at a point of game pace. Uh, but it's almost like everybody forgets that John Tavares' first year in Toronto, he played with Mitch Marner the entire time and had almost 50 goals. I think people completely forget that. And I am surprised the Leafs never went back to it after that. It was like Matthews and Marner said, no, we want to play together. And at the end of the day, Nylander and Matthews always worked. And Marner and Tavares always worked. And it's no surprise it's working now. Tavares is on pace for 48 goals this year. Yeah. Neil, or, uh, wow. uh, Mitchell Marner is on pace for about 79 assists. <laughs> That's unreal. And you know what? For all the shit Mitch Marner takes... Uh, a lot of it justified, but he's on a 14 game point streak and John Tavares came here to play with Mitch Marner. That was a part of the the cell video. It was a part of the cell video. I don't know if we've ever talked about this, but I have heard legends and I believe them to be true that part of Dubas's sales package to John Tavares when he was trying to woo him in free agency involved Mitch Marner uh, in video form selling him on the team. And then they played together to no one's surprise. And they were unbelievable. And they were unreal. They brought each other to a different level. And I always thought it was weird that in a bind, they never went back to it, really. Ever. Ever. And it's also weird. Oh, I mean, listen, if you want to know why Mitch Marner made so much money, it's the John Tavares here. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's why he's, that's, he signed the extension right after that. Yep. But I think it's because of Steve's point that he made last episode is that the other way works too. Other way works too. <laughs> you said uh, we have four elite forwards and you can just flip floppy them because they all work. Yep. <laughs> you know, sixty. And, we got 60 goals out of Matthews and Marner. And, you know, that line had its ups and its downs last night. It was on the ice for one actual goal and one <laughs> taken away goal. Mm-hmm. Um, but Robertson was the first leaf I noticed. He had, uh, I want to say, the first shot of the game, yep. first scoring chance of the game. Uh, Marner with Robertson makes a boatload of sense. Um, then he's like yeah, one of the hardest working players. Nick's going to be scratched on Friday. So is he actually? I don't know, but I assume no. There, or Saturday, he pick should one. play at least one of those games. Pick one. He's he should gonna be, play at least mm-hmm. one. He's going to be scratched. Mm-hmm. So do you want your thing? It's not going to happen. It's okay if he's scratched for one. Okay. The Leafs also made a trade yesterday immediately what? after we finished recording the podcast <laughs> in which we said, I don't think the Leafs are going to make a trade here. The defense isn't that bad. It's thin, but it's not that bad. And it's the trade everyone guessed. Everybody had their eyes on Connor Timmons, who was a former Sioux Greyhound, was Rasmus Sandin's defense partner, uh, and has had his career am- hamper- hampered by injury. He was um, actually a second round pick of the Avalanche. Mm-hmm. He's played 41 games, 12 games in the playoffs too, which is valuable. But concussion in his first year, which held him out for a whole year. I think he's had some surgeries and he's played his conditioning stint in Tucson. He's 24 years old. What do they actually have? Yeah. So what is this? A concussion held him out of his uh, final year in junior. Mm -hmm. Um, He had a a knee injury that held him out a long time. And his conditioning stint was an upper body injury. I don't uh, know. Shoulder? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, what you have here is a reclamation project. 
uh, for sure. Um, the Coyotes were going to waive him. Uh, there's a couple things there. The Coyotes were pretty sure he was going to get claimed. And if he would have got claimed, it wouldn't have been the Leafs who got him because they're way too far down the waiver wire priority list. Mm -hmm. Right? So if a team lower in the standings, then the Leafs puts a claim on him. That's who gets him. So if the Buffalo Sabres make a claim and the Leafs make a claim, the Sabres get him. How did the Leafs get away with only getting, only giving up Curtis Douglas for him? I don't know. Because the, the, the speculation was it was going to be a, a draft pick, a th third or a fourth rounder. Yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, well, okay, so the Leafs literally cannot make that happen. Yeah. Because they're at 50 <laughs> contract slots. Uh, so they can't give up a draft pick. Yeah. Interesting. They, <laughs> okay. They can't do it. From, from an asset standpoint, uh, like, let's say Curtis Douglas turns into something, right? And Dubas, oh, you big dummy, looks mm -hmm. like an idiot. This was a free agent signing who the Dallas Stars let go. So if the Leafs let him go, it wouldn't be the first team. Right. Um, Stars picked him, I want to say, in the fourth round. And why not? Mm -hmm. Why not? He's six foot nine, 242. He's a monster of a man. He's also got zero goals, one assist, and 30 penalty minutes in 13 AHL games. So people, people are pissed. I, there, I saw some Twitter scuttle about... Uh, comparison because he's so big, hmm. right? He's like six seven, was it? Six nine. Six, six nine. nine. Sorry, he's he's probably the biggest professional hockey player in the world. So there were people who were like, "Well, this was probably another Mason Marchment deal." By the way, Mason Marchment could has, be. I mean, it could be, but Mason Marchment scored twenty seven goals his, his entire career. Everybody needs to chill out. Oh, Mason Marchment, that other guy who was undrafted and a free agent who the Leafs took into their minor league system and developed and, and traded for an asset. And I, admittedly, maybe they on balance haven't won that trade, but no, they haven't. But like, okay, you don't like losing Mason Marchman. Well, they signed him as a AHL free agent. Well, okay, you don't like losing Trevor Moore. There's another guy Dubas found as an AHL free agent. You don't like losing Curtis Douglas potentially. There's another guy Dubas found as a AHL. And what did he turn all those agent? into? Assets for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And if he had his way, if the legends are to be believed, another guy Dubas badly, badly wanted and couldn't pull off was Yanni Gord. Oh, that would have been great. Who was another guy who I believe was undrafted. He worked his way through the Tampa system. What, what kind of player is, is Connor Timmons? I know he's a right-handed shot, which is really valuable to the Leafs. Um, he would be depth. And the thing is, is that, you know, if everybody comes back healthy and they won't, because I don't think Muzzin's going to be back, even though he's a left shot, you're going to have room for Timmons on the roster. Um, right shot defenseman, he's going to be your 5'6 guy. What is he? Uh, is he a big hitting guy? Is he a move the puck guy? What does he do? He, I think he's a move the puck guy, um, because even though his NHL numbers are real skinned, uh, he doesn't put up numbers. Uh in the AHL, he does. And in the OHL, he did. Um, He's on Team Canada? I mean, Joe Sackick wanted him bad enough to spend a second rounder on him. That should be a pretty good indicator that he was good. Um, the problem with him is uh, we have no idea what he is because he's missed so much time. And we need to see what his body can do. Um, he's six foot two. He's over 200 pounds. That's good. He's a living, breathing human being who plays hockey on defense as his profession who shoots right-handed that makes him very appealing for the Leafs um so in the short term he's a guy who could play on your NHL roster and be adequate his fancies with Colorado and his full season were fine um problem is the guy hasn't played man the guy hasn't played mm. um so here's here's why they needed to make a trade for somebody right so they called up uh, Victor Mete, and they called up Mac Hollowell. Mac Hollowell played his first NHL game. I love the story. Let's be honest. He probably, I don't think he should be playing NHL games. All right. I don't, he probably shouldn't be playing. He could NHL be out games. there. You know? he, yeah, he could be out there. <laughs> he can be guy. Yeah. He can be warm body. He can be guy. Um, what I am trying to look for right now is the, uh, here it is. Here's the Marley's defense from their last game. Rafai, Mete, Kokinen, Hollowell, Petroniero, Rindell. So if you don't know who those players are, let me run you through it. 
AHL contract, Victor Mete, who's up with the Leafs. Mm -hmm. Guy who's uh, playing his first professional hockey in North America. Guy who's up with the Leafs. Guy who's on an AHL contract. Guy who's playing his first professional hockey in North America. Kokinen and Rindell have both played in the ECHL this year. Rafai is not eligible to be signed because they're at their maximum or called up, and neither is Petro Nero. Uh, they're getting very close to literally not having anyone they can call up <laughs> because they have so many injuries. Um, and like you don't want to be throwing Kokinen and, no. and Rindell to the Wolves. Um, so they needed a guy. My only issue... Mm -hmm. With this move, when you brought it up, Adam, I shook my head because of how damn predictable it was. Kyle Dubas goes after another guy who he worked with in the Sioux, who mm -hmm. was under him in the Sioux Greyhounds, and he brought him to Toronto. I was just how many? Are you, okay, now rewind the, the show argument again. to that. The argument to that is he. These are the guys he knows best. So why wouldn't he ride with the guys he knows best? He, there his, are other guys in the league. There are. But his success rate is like pretty unusually good. high. Pretty good. <laughs> it is with guy these guys. It is. Okay. Listen, Nick Ritchie didn't work. That was bad. Yeah. Jack Campbell worked. That was good. Yes. Michael Bunting worked. Jack Campbell worked that until it didn't. Man, I yeah. honestly, Jesse, I got the I said the same thing last year too, because I have questions about it, and I'm with you. I, I agree <laughs> with you. I I I think and I got a lot of shit actually for it on, on Twitter after I said lovable. it. What, Dubas? Oh, I thought you were talking about Campbell. No, no, I wasn't talking about Campbell. No, I've always not... been a, no I'm talking about Dubas yeah. and, the, and the Greyhounds thing. Oh. I think, I think... <sighs> when you're only going after the one thing, the, all the results you're going to get are from that one thing. If you never look outside of the box, we can never know if that would be a more successful path. I think people are being very odd about the Greyhounds thing and being very protective of Dubas for no good reason. Um, you mean odd in defending it? Yes, odd yes. in defending it. Yes. Um, because this isn't, I'm not saying getting Connor Timmons is bad because he's a greyhound. That would be small minded and dumb. Um, and not, but there are a lot of people out there who would say that. And right. that's small minded and dumb. Yes. There's a lot of people who would say purple is blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, dude, uh, yeah, don't look up. <laughs> there's too many people. There's too many people. Oh, I bet people say it, you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> There's too many people. You know what? The show should have been people say the darndest things. <laughs> people <laughs> right? say the darndest sure. things. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, but F finish your point. But continuing on with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, yeah, it's, I don't, I think, a, and okay, not nobody, but an extraordinarily small amount of people are saying this move stinks because he's a greyhound. <laughs> That's wrong. No, that's not. That's okay. But continue your point, which was you think people are being extremely protective of Dubas and maybe perhaps they don't need to be what? for the Greyhound thing. All you need to do is focus on what's right and wrong. Uh, focus on. Is, are you right? But are, is, is Jesse right to question the constant Greyhound connection? Yeah. But. Then we we go okay. Let's you, look at like, the results. I look at every move in a vacuum, right? And I look at this move, and I go, okay. If Timmons had never played for the Greyhounds, would this bet make sense? I think it does. The Leafs have had pretty good success with reclamation projects. Mm -hmm. um, the one that immediately came to mind for me, even though he's a forward is Tyler Ennis. Like, that dude was washed. Like, he wasn't going to play in the league. I don't know if he has a team this year, but his stint with the Leafs was good enough to keep him in the league for another few years. Mm -hmm. Right? He played with the Oilers last year, I think. He was with the Sens for a year or two. He was good enough with the league. He scored a hat trick against Calgary. Mm -hmm. That was cool. Uh, Andre Kasha last year. Unfortunately, that appears to be ending rather unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. That's um, a bummer. But he played well. He did. Yeah, he, post I mean, Toronto, Ennis played for Ottawa, Edmonton, Ottawa. Right? They've taken some really injury prone guys. Hey, here's an injury prone guy who's playing really well, really well for the Toronto Maple Leafs Matt Murray. 
he, so far. The asterisk is he missed a month, <laughs> but yep. he's looking great. <laughs> I just I I wonder because one thing kind of is always said about Dubis. Steve, you say it a lot and the Toronto Maple Leafs as a whole, is they're so process-oriented. Mm-hmm. Everything is mm-hmm. about the process. We stick to this, and we go through it. And I question, okay, this process has reduced, produced results at, let's say, 5 to 1, you know? And I wonder if you swerve from the process a little, and you go away from just the guys you know, could you get a 7 to 1 occasionally? Maybe you'll get a 3 to 1 instead. I'm talking about the results that they get, you right. know? Could you get a higher end result? If you went after Vili Huso instead of Matt Murray, would your results have been better? You know, instead of going after the guy guy you know. You Billy Huso. I don't know. He's, he's just a good goaltender. They weren't who's been interested really in well. Billy Huso. They he's wanted Mark Andre Fleury. He's just a good goaltender who's been playing well. But Murray so, looks great. He does. Yeah, I bet but he's also been out for a month. Than stupid Vili Husso. V- Vili Husso has been amazing. I think he has three shutouts in like. Uh, I think he's week. more like Vili Puso. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Uh, Vili Husso. Three shutouts? So, no, it's under reviewed. No, none of them count. <laughs> <laughs> it's under reviewed. None so of them I, count. I think it's fair when they keep doing the same thing over and over. I'm just like, what if one time you mi- you mixed it up a little and you got a better result? They do mix it up. We just don't ever talk about it because we're just because it's just another I trade. Don't, I don't think they do as often as we'd like. Here's the good news: he's <laughs> running out of greyhounds to get. <laughs> he's got them all. Yeah, he, like, he has collected every he's got them all. all 150. Man, if I was Darnell Nurse <laughs> and I, I'd pack my shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just pack your shit. Exactly. You're coming to Toronto at some You're point. You're coming to oh, Toronto, or or Dubas leaves at the end of the year because the Leafs are playing chicken with him and goes and signs yeah. somewhere else, and then he goes and picks him up there. I do have to say, uh, w- if Dubas doesn't come back as Leafs GM, the turnover is going to be legendary. Mm-hmm. Like, because it's just it's just his guys. Yeah, between it's yeah. just an ocean of his guys. Yeah. Between this year's team and next year's team, it's and gonna be completely different. Get out of here! Oh yeah, I had this guy in junior, this guy in junior, this guy in junior, this guy in junior, oh, yeah. this guy yep. in junior. Just gave this guy a four year contract. He was my client when I was an agent. This guy in junior, this guy in junior. Is that Yarncrook? Yep. Yep. Oh, and right. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, here. I mean, listen, Jesse, you're not wrong. There's something to it. Yarncrook was Tubas's agent. Like, or, yeah, or agent. I'm sorry, vice versa. That is kind of wild. But he's like, but he also knows also, him. I'm, not, I'm not making something up. I'm just, it's just, we've been, the Leafs have been very successful. Like, I think we can yes. all agree that they've been a very successful regular season team. And I just wonder if there have been more success or a different path to success or more wins on the board if you just tried something a little different. Or more playoff you might wins. Be right. different guys I would trade. System. I don't know. I would trade five regular season wins, ten regular season wins every year for a playoff victory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Leafs used to finish like seventh, eighth going into the playoffs with Matt Sunday, and then they go win a round. Right. But, hey, right now, just blindfold on. You're not allowed to see who it is. Mm-hmm. Here's a guy. He's a former second round pick. He's big. He shoots right. Plays D. You want him? Connor Timmons. It, Connor it, Timmons. Co- it costs you Curtis Douglas. Yeah, for sure. I take it every day who lost his spot on the depth chart to like Pontus Holmberg and SDA. Yeah, I think I take mm-hmm. But yep. the, the thing is, Dubas isn't doing that blind. He has a little magnet attached to him that, that goes to all <laughs> greyhounds the out there. And he's just, a little, he's just attracted to that way. And he found Step that into guy. my web. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think <laughs> I need to look. I, I'm going to I'm going to look at the other greyhounds. The, the, uh, the thing conversation we are going to have to start having too, and today's not the day to do it, is the Leafs have continued to be, you know, listen, frustrating mm. but successful mm. they're in the top five in the league again so dumb okay oh yeah and we're gonna get into this next but i need another i need to cover another topic first we're gonna talk about some teams that it's american thanksgiving happy thanksgiving, happy thanksgiving. and oh, yeah. the elliot i think elliot friedman started this but it's something that we look at every year is who's in the playoffs and who's not because 88 or 87 and a half percent of the teams that are in the playoffs currently will still be there based on history by the end of the season. That's a lot. That's most. And the Leafs are in it again. And I wonder if they're not making, if management's not really making the best move here playing chicken with a guy who you know as soon as he's on the market. If, if I'm an owner of a smaller market club and I know of a GM who just guaranteed a team playoff spots in what, seven of the last eight years as the assistant and the and the actual gm he was a part of that team fucking right i'm signing him fucking right if i can get playoff revenue from people in seats i don't care if it's like really 
How many teams would be like, I'd be dying for the Leafs roster right now? Do you work for the pension plan? I No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, I'm just saying the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to have to not play chicken for much longer because my question will be, as much as Dubas does drive me crazy, and I respect the shit out of him, I respect what he's done, I love what he's done, makes me kind of fucking crazy sometimes. Who's better? That's what you need to start asking yourself. If not him, then who? This is fascinating for February and March. It's the, well, it's the strangest position. I think the Leafs are in a... Who's in a weird, weirder position than the Leafs? Well, other it, than the team playing in a university. If I might, like, if I might, I want to compare this to Barry Trotz in... in Washington, oh, yeah. who we knew from game one was uh, this is his last year. Barry's gone. And all the Caps fans were like, you know what? And I remember saying at the time, like, I don't know. His record's pretty good, guys. Mm -hmm. And 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 Caps fans, and, and rightfully so, were like, listen, they haven't had playoff success. Wow. Sound familiar, Leaf fans? Yeah. And what, is, what happens that year? Now, I hope this happens to the Leafs. They go and they win. Mm -hmm. And then the Caps go, well, shit, we got to offer them a contract now. And they do. And they and overcame goes, their black and yellow rivals in the playoffs. That's right. They did. Hey, mm -hmm. they did. <laughs> Don't think I hadn't made the connection. <laughs> but then Barry Trotz goes on to leave. To leave. <laughs> and, and have the Caps immediately cap find success. Listen, the Caps and immediately find success. Now the Caps have been good, but have they ever been that team? They haven't won a playoff series since he left. I think it is absolutely absurd to not just pay a man who won the Stanley Cup. It was the Oh no, they the they wanted to. They offered him the same amount of no, money the Islanders did. They wouldn't. They wouldn't go up the, to. Oh, they his, wouldn't go to the. They wouldn't million? go to the number. No. Oh, that's okay. No, well, no, they're no. no, no. They they were cheap about it. Yeah. I uh, fascinating situation because I think the responsible thing to do. Listen, you're MLSE. You got all the money. You got all the money. If you want to fire him, fire him. Lock mm -hmm. him up for at least a year. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing: if I'm Dubas, take your year offer and shove it. It's no, I'm, no, it's I'm four Kyle Dubas. I'm not even 40. Yeah, you got to give me a long extension here. Fascinating. Cause, like, it's the Toronto goddamn Maple Leafs, man. Yep. They're unbelievable. They're mediocre. They're <laughs> it's crazy. It's infuriating. They're one of the most fabulous, the, the, electrifying, elite talent, elite yips. Uh, <laughs> so how do you read this book? <laughs> It's, Honestly, it shouldn't be the passion returns. It's Toronto Maple Leafs, elite talent, elite yips. It feels That's like what every page VHS is a different is. language, and I don't know what to do with this yeah. fucking yeah. And MLSE is sitting there being like, we're going to play the wait and see game. I think it's Shani who's playing the wait and see game. Hmm. Shani's the one. Listen, Sh it, it, you could say what you want about Brendan Shanahan. I think he's done an unbelievable job turning this franchise around yes. to, from where it was when we started this show. Holy shit. Yeah, I don't want to come across as anti Shani. No. I'm just. Whenever but, we look at the full scope of the Leafs, I'm like, well, why are you ignoring the president? If, if you're asking, if you're asking whose decision this is, it's not the board's decision. Shani and the board get along great. They say to Shani, you know what? Whatever you want. And the proof of that is the gigantic the analytics staff, the amazing in-game staff. For, you're not even thinking about the players here. He can spend whatever he wants on everything else in the world. Scouts analytics promotions whatever the leafs are fucking everywhere e equipment yeah. of course yeah. they have the best they can buy they buy arenas they they're trying to let their players practice all summer they provide medical care all summer teams do not do this i i i've talked about this before but tobias Lindbergh, who uh was a prospect with the leafs but he came from the sens organization one of the things i talked to him about was the difference between the two organizations and he's like yeah the marley's goalie coach travels with the team <laughs> And that was eight years ago. Uh, it was a, it was quite some time ago, and I just never ever thought of that. Some teams are like, no, it's too expensive to bring mm -hmm. our goalie coach. Let's what save if you're on, on the like bus. A six yeah, game road trip money. and your goalie sticks. And the AHL, you do go on a six game road trip. You go on a long road trip. Yeah, in the, yeah. on the, the Marlies do. They do a three week road trip every, every February. Friggin' <laughs> no, it's November. What, is it the no, no, boat, it's the boat show? show? Yeah, it's, it's in the boat it's in January. Show. February. Oh, I thought it was the horse show. That too. That too. Yeah. Oh, they, they, what do they, they call that? The, the horse show. I don't know what it's no, called. No, the Royal Canadian Tattoo uh, win, or winter something. Fair? Winter Winter Fair. Yeah. yeah. There's the boat show, which is 
awesome yeah. because We're, they they flood the, uh, the Coca Cola Coliseum. They yeah. have actual boats in there. Yeah, but then there's also the one with the horses. That's not called the horse show. But so, yeah, it's called the Toronto Horse Show. <laughs> so, but but my point They're in this guys, by Manscaped. my point in this guys is that the Leafs, the guy making this call is Brendan Shanahan. I, it's curious to me that he's been, just been playing. Hey, we'll see how this season plays out. Yeah, and get a contract. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, okay. So, I guess we're we're getting this news now. Yeah, I handed it to you because I didn't know what to do. Yeah, I think. Uh, okay, so uh, unfortunately, uh, Boreas Salming has passed away. So while the full statement loads on my uh, my computer, I'll read the the statement posted to uh, um, to Twitter. Oh, uh, here we go. Uh, this is on the Leaf site. On behalf of the Salming family, it's with great na- sadness that the Toronto Maple Leafs announced the passing of franchise icon Boreas Salming. He was seventy one. Statement from Brandon Shanahan: The Toronto Maple Leafs mourn the loss of Boreas Salming. Boreas was a pioneer of the game and an icon with an unbreakable spirit and unquestioned toughness. He helped open the door to Europeans in the NHL and defined himself through his play on the ice and through his contributions to the community. Boria joined the Maple Leafs 50 years ago and will forever be a part of the hockey family. Uh, we extend our deepest condolences to his wife, Pia, his children, Teresa, Anders, Rasmus, Bianca, Lisa, and Sarah, and his brother, Stieg. Uh, Salmi's career began with the Leafs when he signed as a free agent prior to the 73-74 season over the course of 16 seasons. He played 1,100 games or 10,099 games with the blue and white. Go on to establish a team record for most assists, which is still unbroken, uh, while wow. registering the first, uh, sorry, the most goals, 148, and the most points, 768, and playoff points by a defenseman in franchise history at 49 playoff points. His number 21 hangs in the rafters at Scotiabank Arena. We'll leave it, uh, there, there's the rest of the statement, but we can kind of leave that. Um, listen, we've talked about Boria many times uh, before on this show. He's my favorite pre-birth leaf, as I always like to yeah. say. Like, he's my favorite leaf that uh, uh, that played for the Leafs before I was ever born, and I think finished playing for the Leafs before I was born. Tough, mean, but also heart of gold. Everybody loved Boria, and he was he was the number one stud defenseman that you could argue they've never had since. Like he was tough, he could score, he could play you know power play, but he was a mean sob. And he came into the NHL in a time when Europeans weren't welcome. And they made it really hard on him. The North American players made it really hard on him. Yeah, his battles with the Flyers, the the at the height of them being the Broad Street Bullies. He never backed down. Never did. And uh, so, absolute warrior. Uh, so we just could shout out to um, Boria and his family today. Uh, it's a real shame. You know, you mentioned a minute ago. Uh, you know, the things Brandon Shanahan has, has done for this organization. And J- Jesse's got the photo up right now. Um, one of the greatest wrongs that he righted was retiring numbers, I think. And making <laughs> making sure um, the players of yesteryear got their due. Um, mending the fence with Dave Keon, I thought was extremely important. Mm-hmm. Uh, Johnny Bauer getting his moment, uh, and Boris Salming too. And I, I, oh my God, it's unbelievable. Like that guy was, um, in front of crowds at Scotiabank arena last week. I was there two weeks. You were there. I was there at the Canucks game. Yep. I was there. God, it happened so fast. Like when did the news break that he was even that he had ALS about six months ago? Yeah. And you know, it's funny was I remember seeing him at the Eaton Center in like 2017, right before the Heritage Classic game. I was I was doing some last minute Christmas shopping and he was in town. CrossFit instructor. Yeah. And he remember we used to we used to profile him on the show. We talked about him on the show here because he had his own underwear brand in Sweden of which he was a model for. That was like five years ago. Yeah. It was really recent. Like he was in um, unbelievable shape Um, and a really great guy. It's really special that he got the opportunity to have that moment on Hall of Fame weekend in front of all the fans right before this happened. Totally. Like, uh, thank God for the timing of that. Yeah. And that, that we were able to have that last moment as fans with Boria. I mean, at the end of the day, like it's, you know, it's, I'm sh- sure he had a great relationship with his family, great relationship with his friends, but I, I thought it was so important, um, that he got that moment to really understand that he was loved. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. By, by, uh, 
this uh this fan base Un- unbelievable how close to the end it was yeah wow absolutely and with that, we have to move forward to our next topic, and I apologize for this, but uh, this is the way it goes sometimes with, with tough news. Uh, the exact percentage, I believe, is 87 and a half. But for teams currently in the playoffs at American Thanksgiving, um, have a look, because only two or three of them will change over the rest of the season, right? And if I look at, uh, if I look at right now, let's look at the Eastern Conference. Okay. Three surprising teams that are not currently in a playoff spot. Pittsburgh, Florida, Washington. And oh Washington is the one that is most surprising because, frankly, they're far down. They're not, I mean, you, you look at them and they're like, well, they're only three points spread or four points spread between them and the playoffs. But, I mean, really, it's, it feels a little bit more than that. This is a team that's sub 500 and has kind of surprised a lot of people with just not being there this year. And if you want to sneak into a playoff spot in the Eastern Conference, the bottom wildcard team that you have to leapfrog is Tampa. <laughs> so good luck with that. And check out Montreal hanging around. I told you they'd be better. They're not great, but they're better. One team that we all pegged as a playoff team that's currently sitting outside is Florida. Last year's President's Trophy winners, I think we all thought they would be a decent team again. and. Uh, they are sitting on the outside looking in. I can't remember where I had them. I want to say I might have had them as a wild card team. Uh, they've been pretty unimpressive. Mm-hmm. I got to say, Pittsburgh, uh, I want to say it was the Chris Johnston show. They were talking about, like, listen, uh, there aren't enough playoff spots for every team in the Metro to make it. So if you, you scroll up there, you got New Jersey in first. They weren't in last year. You got the Islanders in second. They weren't in last year. You got Carolina. They're basically a mainstay. You got Stanley Cup favorites, the New York Rangers. Yep. And Best then, team in the league. So Columbus doesn't have a hope. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, oh my God. They're, they're four points back of Washington with two games in hand. I didn't realize how bad Washington had been. The three, six, and one in their last ten. I mean, Philly is just completely tanking after a pretty decent start. Look yeah. at Washington's road record. 2-6-2. Two, and two. That's where the problems are coming. The, I think part of the Penguins' problem, so they're 6-5-2 and two on the road. 4-2-1 and one at home. What I see there isn't that the record's bad. It's that the record's so small. Um, they haven't played at home very much. I think the mm-hmm. Penguins will be fine. Yeah, yeah, they won. They did win last night against Calgary. There's no four in a row struggling team. I think the team. I think the team we should be worried about, and you pointed it out already, is, is Washington. Like they, they don't look as talented as we thought they'd be. They're not going to make it. Like yeah. just the the way it looks. Um, <clears throat> you you need signs that you can make it. Columbus ain't. Philly ain't. Pittsburgh's got a fighting chance. The Rangers are obviously in it with a fighting chance. And there's got to be a cutoff at some point. And Washington is uh, already falling uh, into a really nasty part of that conversation. Okay, how about this? Of the playoff teams right now, who falls out and who stays? Like, what do you what do you think is going to happen? Well, Detroit's the easy pick, but they're hot as a pistol, six two and two. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I would say Detroit's the easy pick. And then you supplant them with who? <laughs> oh, Pittsburgh? man. It would, oh, uh, see, see, it'd be Tampa. Tampa's in a playoff spot, right? No, no, but Tampa has to surpass the Red Wings because the Red Wings are in an Atlantic spot. Yes. Unless Tampa does that, Pittsburgh can't leapfrog Detroit because Detroit is in an Atlantic spot. Right. But Pittsburgh could leapfrog the Rangers or Tampa. They could leapfrog the Rangers, but they the Rangers have been so ordinary, and I just don't think that's what they are. I think they're way better than that. Um, and I also don't think they're going to tolerate mediocrity. Um, I think in relatively short order. Well, actually, we saw it yesterday. They made a trade. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had Ryan, Ryan Reeves. Ryan Reeves, who they were able to get a draft pick back for Ryan Reeves in that contract, a, f- a fifth round pick, no salary retained, and they're not going to sit on that pick. They're they're going to flip it for. I also they thought it was crazy it. that the Wild were taking on a salary. 
Bill Guerin really likes him. Remember when the Penguins got him? Bill Guerin. Bill, Bar- Bill Guerin was, I believe, the AGM okay. at the time. Uh, and listen, there's uh, lots of things to like about Ryan Reeves, but he's for what the production he brings, I don't think that that contract's worth it. And but he is a he's a dressing room guy. He's a and, and the Wild have struggled a little bit this year, so maybe that's the reason. He's a good shaker upper. Um, the one thing I would advise about Detroit is I feel like they had a pretty good start last year as well. Before both their goalies turned into the worst goalies, it's not going to happen this year. They have a great starting goaltender. I don't know. I don't <laughs> remember his name. His name. Uh, I can't remember. Well, somebody will bring it up. Somebody will uh, tell Bennington. us. N- definitely not that guy. Uh, Ryan Reeves was scratched. Uh, I was trying to look at how many games. It was seven of the Rangers' last eight games, and he was sitting there being like, "Okay, I still think I need a new contract eventually at the end of this." You know. So I need to be playing games to get in this position. And he talked about it after they they asked him about the trade because he I forget what reporter he spoke to on in the airport on the way. Russo? But I think oh, it, was, it I don't know. Was it Russo? I'm not sure. I forget. Anyway, so he's like, I need to get out of here in New York because I don't have a place in this lineup and I need a contract eventually. Mm-hmm. And they're not playing him. So they found a fit, which I'm shocked about that it would be Minnesota. But it makes sense for him career wise that it's time to move on from the Rangers. And he, and he did ask for the trade. He requested it. Mm-hmm. It makes sense for Minnesota uh, stylistically because they had. Um, <clears throat> it's funny. Like, who in the league is willing to fight Ryan Reeves? It's a very short list. Sure is. Nobody. <laughs> One of those guys is Marcus Felino, mm-hmm. who we know because they fought mm-hmm. and now they're teammates. Um, these guys want to be big and nasty and awful to play against. Um, and that's what most teams in a salary cap bind try to do is they try to beat you up and let Kirill Kaprizov have all the room in the world. There you go. Um, let's go to the Western conference. Oh, and sorry. One last thing. What did I text you immediately after the trade? What? Can't wait for Ryan Reeves first game as a Minnesota wild against the Leafs. Oh <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow at two why, o'clock. Why is it always like that? Uh, I don't oh, know. the biggest news story in the NHL happening that weekend. That team is playing the Leafs on Saturday night or on Friday. Like fuck. Um always the fucking Leafs. So looking going into <laughs> Thanksgiving uh weekend in the in the States, uh in the Western Conference, some of the surprise teams that are out, maybe not so much a surprise, but a team that's perennially in it is Minnesota. Another team perennially in it is Nashville. Uh but the most surprising after last night's really flimsy performance, are the Edmonton Oilers not in a playoff spot currently? That is a team. They are a, a okay. They have two of the top three scorers in the league, and Jason Robertson, who we need to talk about more, yeah. has split them in half. So you got McDavid, Robertson, Drysidel at the top three of the league. Did he pass Drysidel last did. night? Yeah. Wow. And 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 oh. yet and yet, listen to this: the Edmonton Oilers are a minus six in goal differential. Oh, man. The, so, the, the, the Campbell contract's looking like a disaster. Why is the West so bad? Why is the West so Well, the West <laughs> could say that about the East for the entire, like, decade previous to this. That's true. But, so, like, I'm including Vancouver in this. Teams 6 through 10 are <clears throat> borderline <throat> shambolic. <laughs> shambolic! They are bad. Dude, Vancouver's, the Canucks yeah. are three points out of a playoff spot. Oh, God. Three. So if you're going to see way better kidding, they've still kind of been asked. If you're going to see movement, you're going to see it in the Western conference in those wildcard spots. Calgary, who's not had a great start. They're just kind of trying to find themselves seem to be getting it a little bit that Vladar, the the Penguins Calgary game last night, Vladar stood on his head and just Malkin had that unbelievable penalty shot, like Mm -hmm. picture perfect penalty shot to win. Uh, Sorry, shootout shot. Um, Calgary's looking better. But let's talk about Minnesota. I'm not totally surprised. They're in a cat bind. I thought they were better than this. Edmonton is shocking. I think they'll get it together. I think missing Evander Kane was a real shock to the system, even though they they weren't trending in the best direction before that. But then that happening, it doesn't help the situation at all. Like Evander Kane became such an important piece to that team. And then now he's gone and they still can't really play defense. And Jack Campbell hasn't been the greatest. And uh, Connor McDavid can get a little more beat up because Kane's not there. It's just not happy in Edmonton right now. But they're one of those teams where you, you're you really top heavy and it works for you when everyone's there. Mm-hmm. But if they're not, you're screwed. And like they're not alone. It's not like the Leafs will be in a great spot if Tavares or Matthews get hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've seen that, but uh, they just have a really hard time coping with it. I just think it's funny how I'm right so often 
(laughs) (laughs) What do you mean? You know who's going to be tied for a playoff spot if they win their next two games? Who's that? The Arizona Coyotes. The Arizona bloody That's Coyotes. Of, no, 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 Jesse, no, no, is that no, no. not a lot of if? No, he's he's lying about the math. That's no, no. How many teams are in between Arizona and a playoff spot? One, two, three, four, five <laughs> teams. Steve, everybody would shit. have to not play. Everybody would have to not Thank play. You. No, Thank the you. Sharks have played four more games than them. The Canucks have played two. And the Predators have played two. Right, and the I would Oilers be with you. The Oilers have played two, and the Wild have played one. I would be and with you. And the Blues have played one. Okay, but let's look at winning they have percentage. Games in hand in all of them. To be in the playoffs in the Western Conference, you need to have a minimum 526 winning percentage. Arizona's got a 444. The league is going to shut down, and Arizona is only going to play their games. And then if they just win two, no. they get to make the playoffs. That's right. That's how like, it works. That's like, okay, yeah, everybody, everybody yeah. wait. Arizona's catching up. They're co- the, hold on. The five teams in between them aren't going to win at all, ever. Karel uh, Vesnamelka <laughs> is going to potentially lead them to... I, I believe what I said was they're going to be in a playoff spot by Christmas. Mm hmm. They're not. They're real close. And it's not Christmas. They're stupidly close. To I think. No, they're they stupidly close because the West, the bottom of the West is bad. Yeah. The bottom of the West is who, though? Name the, the, the garbage Hawks team. The they're the five worst teams in the yeah, league. Yeah, the San Jose, Arizona, Chicago, Anaheim. They're terrible. They're almost garbage. Except for that, like the Senators are the on the Eastern side are, are making. Making some of those teams look good. The, the Senators are that bad. By points percentage, the Coyotes should be above the Canucks and the Sharks. I'm just saying. The only good things in there are Eric Carlson and it's 30 points, and Troy Terry and his game winning goal for my fantasy team, James and Reimer. Trevor Zegris and James his Reimer. dangles, and James not Reimer. James Reimer. James Reimer, because he doesn't count. James Reimer. So it's the only good th- And Arizona's fun Mullet Arena. He should. Uh, <laughs> Blackhawks started hot. They're out of it. Dude, like the whole, a lot of teams in that West little clump are really disappointing. Like the blues are heating up and I don't think they're going to cool down. The wild are just sort of in there. The Oilers are just sort of in there. The Oilers are 500. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, the Preds are really disappointing. I, I was just really, really, high really high Preds. Them. They're really Preds, man. Oh, I was so they high were, they were, but uh, based on what, man, Adam's they gonna, were the same last year. Adam's I thought they gonna were good and they got better. Jersey. You're going to have to get a Preds jersey. Yo, you you're going to, you, you think you the Preds hate, are that? You hate the I don't hate predators. the Preds. I love the Preds. You've hated them for two years now. No, but they're, they're just, that. they are what they are, which is a 7-8 team. And they're sitting in 10th currently and we're surprised? I've played four games. I'm three and one. Mm-hmm. I'm an eight ninety. <laughs> You're Jack Campbell. Nope. No. Okay. Talk, we're talking about the Preds, right? Nope. Oh, former Pred. Connor Ingram. <laughs> nope. It's not Connor Ingram. Okay, he is a former Pred. I think he he's sure Arizona. is. Former Pred goalie. Three and one. Three and one. So I've only played four games. <clears throat> What former Pred goalie? They've, they've only had one goalie in the last 80 years. Yeah, yeah it was like no. Pecorino uh, and then UC. Former Pred backup. And he was a pure oh, backup. Uh, got it. Big save, Dave. Big save and David. Oh. <laughs> Dave Riddick. It just feels like a bomb ready to go off. Like, the Jets have been so good. He well, had, they were trash last He's night. obviously won. He's got a winning record. But the Preds have been so good. Or, damn it. The Jets. Jets have been so good. Jesse's literally watching football. <laughs> <laughs> I think your takes are interesting enough to, to listen to fully. Yeah. Steve. No, Don't worry. Keep Thank going, you, Steve. <laughs> the Jets have Bills been are on. so good, yeah. and Hellebuck has been so good. <laughs> yeah. But they're just a little tweak away from Big Save Dave, who has not been good, Yeah, being your starting goalie. Now, he's won three out of four, Yeah, which but... is good, but... So hey, you I, the, I think Eric Sheldon's won three out of four too. Like I don't think it's that great. I also want to say that Big Save Dave has called that because you're always shocked when he does. 
Like That's he was not why he's called that. I think I don't like the take of hey, we're one injury away to Carter Hellebuck of them failing. We're one injury away of any team's best player for them being to in the in the tank. You know, know like ah, like, oh, we're one injury away of Connor McDavid for the Edmonton Oilers to be even further down the standings. You know, you're one bad takeaway from me turning your football off. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you're right. I think I do think if there's a team that I'm looking at that. That could fall. It's it's Winnipeg. No, I'm not. I'm not sold on Seattle. Winnipeg's a playoff team, man. Well, as long as Connor Hellebuck's Connor Hellebuck, yeah, I think any team is. Uh, but I'm not sold on the Seattle Kraken, guys. I'm just not. I know they've had a great start. I know I look, I got egg on my face about that take. I don't believe it. So don't believe it. I keep looking at you know I'm big fantasy guy. I'm always looking at the waiver wire for players who are available, and one of the top players in all of fantasy who is still. Often available on the waiver wire, Martin freaking Jones. I it's crazy. <laughs> crazy. And <laughs> they are riding him to the friggin' moon. It's crazy, isn't it? 11, 5, and 3. Wow. The West. I know. It's what it's nuts. I can't predict the West. LA is third in the division with a minus six goal differential. That's how bad the West. Okay. Oh my the God. Kraken are making the playoffs. But I'm still not well, sold that they're a good team. The West just sucks. Are you are you are saying the Kraken are making the I playoffs? I think they're gonna make the playoffs with this. Look, well, who's gonna replace them? Edmonton's Edmonton? gonna make their way up. Okay. LA's LA is has started weak. Uh, but I think they're better. I don't know. Like yeah, if Edmonton comes back in, I think I could see I, I Steve's right. I think I can see Winnipeg falling. I can also see St. Louis falling back off. I know they've had a better uh last ten. They're like seven and three. But I I, I can see it. I can also nah. see Calgary. Just not figuring this shit out. They're four, three, and three in their last ten. A team that is not gonna fall. This team is what I thought the Preds would be. Mm -hmm. A team that was underrated and had some bad luck, who got better in the off season and would perform better as a result. It's the Dallas Stars. They're they are what I thought the Preds would be. They are what I thought the Kings would be. Mm -hmm. Um They've got what a, wagon. a great young goalie and a great young scorer. Jason oh, Robertson's unbelievable. One of, us, one of us here were really high on the Dallas yes, Stars. That would be Jesse Blake. Uh, yeah. I think that was yeah. one of us. I want to speak <coughs> to the manager um, of, of Jason Robertson. Yeah. So I guess that'd be whoever the GM of the Stars is. Um, he's cheating. What do you mean? He's, he's, he's just that good? He missed parts of camp. And he doesn't suck ass. <laughs> and I just want him to know that's not allowed. How come they got him on such a crazy discount? Uh, what the fuck is that? He's underpaid already. I don't know, man. He's underpaid. Already. He's unreal. Already. I didn't know, like, this dude is up in a conversation with, like, Kaprizov. Like, yeah. He's, <clears throat> and look what he's making. Right? Like. Yeah. No, instantly he's entered that next step of elite performance. Of do you, do you, I, I don't think Dallas regrets the contract extension he got. Uh, no. No. <laughs> no, no, no. We're, no. we're, we're yeah. saying from his perspective. I know. He yeah, regrets yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. I think he'll be okay. Nah, he'll be okay. He's making millions. <laughs> um, crazy. No, uh, and uh, Ben and Sagan, they're back. Like, it, it's been a crazy start for Dallas. Mm -hmm. they've, been, they've looked really good, and their whole team is clicking. One of the most underrated players in the entire league, Miro Haskin. Yes, and we forget how much like because they they in that first round of the playoffs they almost won. Like, let's give them some credit here, and they've just continued that defense and now added a top elite score. Yeah, that they had last year who's just gotten so much better. They're yeah, they're sure. a really good team, and Dallas is definitely for real. Rope hints and they're full of underrated guys. Joe Pavelski, you, uh, he just keeps yeah, I'll age eventually. <laughs> Great team. All right. Let's get into the press conference. Think you know what way it's going to go? Make your bet at Sports Interaction, whether it's the World Cup, hockey, football, basketball, Sports Interaction has you covered. You can bet pregame. What else can you bet? Uh, live in play or and what else? one of their many prop bets. That's right. Sports <laughs> Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Cash out. Thank you. Join now to see all that sports betting has to offer. Want to bet? Head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. That's sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. 19 plus. Please play responsibly. Our next sponsor is actually pretty cool. It's called Athletic Greens. Jesse, yes. can speak to this directly. 
Yes. It You're is looking incredible. Do you have better gut health now? I do. More energy. Yes. Stronger immune system. I actually have never 100%. seen you sick. You're weird I that way. Don't get sick very often is because I do things like take athletic greens. Yeah. Okay. So you gotta check it out. Lend now, me some. What is in athletic greens? Use our code. It's oh. seventy five high quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. And you ask what's in athletic greens. Well, oh, that's all in Jesse now. Right? It's inside of it's me. It's inside of so him. And I poop it out. It's a special blend of ingredients that supports your gut you know, health. You know? Your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, your focus, your aging. Look at him. He looks positively 20. Hopefully. I don't know. Yeah. Listen. It's I don't if know you can try one. it out. It's the camera. <laughs> Time to yeah. reclaim your 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 it's health awful. and arm your immune system to make it easy. Athletic Greens is gonna give you one free year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. And all you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com with the promo code SDP. Athleticgreens.com slash SDP. Sorry, yes. We'll take you directly to that offer. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash SDP to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate in daily nutritional insurance. Jesse? Yes. You like it? I do. You're into it? I'm into it. What else do you need? This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. And, you know, one of the things that we know about the holiday season is it can be very hard. You've got the, the time changing. You've got the cold weather. At least up in Canada, we do, if you're listening from a hot weather climate. Uh, you know, and, and you know what? Frankly, it's just a lot of stress. It doesn't have to be... Therapy doesn't have to be something that you jump into because everything's burning down around you. Sometimes it's like, you know what? I'm feeling a little stressed, and I want an unbiased opinion on my life. That's not bad. Right? Good thing to have. BetterHelp is a good option for you. It's cheaper than regular therapy. Uh, it's the world's largest therapy service. Matched over 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists. Available 100% online, and it's affordable, like I said. You fill out a brief questionnaire. They match you with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can switch to a new therapist. No waiting rooms. No traffic. No endless searching for the right therapist, because you got to have a little chemistry, right? Of course. You have somebody that you feel understands you. Uh, you can learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash STP. That's betterhelp.com slash STP. The Presser SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. Why'd you move the football? Because I needed to use my laptop. You suck. I know. Was it the Portugal game? No, no. not that football. <laughs> oh, American. it's NFL football. Oh. American football. It's Thanksgiving. Okay. All right. Um, it's, I, there's, it's like sports Super Bowl. I love it. I'm part it's of a so much family now. It's Fitba. Fitba. F-I-T-B-A. Fitba. <laughs> Bills are on the two-yard line. 7-7 seven, seven line. Bills. Loaded. They're going to... Oh, Josh Allen's going to run it in. Touchdown. 14-7 Bills. All right. So on SCPN Shop, it is... Black Friday. Yeah. I hope you have signed up for a newsletter uh, earlier than this moment because you would have received a code this morning to uh, get a discount for 20% off everything on the store. If you don't have that code, if you missed out on the newsletter, please go sign up on the newsletter still so you won't miss out on the future uh, newsletter. Uh, send out emails. There we go. Uh, go to our Discord and you can get the code if you just ask nicely in the Dangle Navy merch chat. I'm sure somebody there will give you a little DM and tell you what the code is so you can get your 20% off. So sign up for the Discord if you missed out. Also, I'm pretty sure at some point I'm going to start asking for questions for LFR videos on mm -hmm. Discord. Oh! Switch it up. All right. So to celebrate Black Friday and our sale, we've added quite a few number of items. We are actually over 200 products now in our store, which is fun. Uh, wow. In this week, we've added all of the Game Over robots. So no matter what team, Canadian team you cheer for, you can get a Game Over robot Yay. Uh, with your team's favorite colors. Uh, there are a lot of fun robots. That was a request of the Game Over team. So we got all those in there. There are laptop stickers. There are mugs. There are hoodies. There are t-shirts. We've also added a Steve Dangle special. Oh, go to the next Load. page. Okay. This website sucks. That'll ah, be your internet. What a piece of shit. Oh, there you go. Okay, okay. Slow internet, internet down here. It's, it's loading. Internet. It's loading. It's loading. Uh, there are all the Game Over mugs. We've added a Steve Dangle favorite. Shambolic! We now have shambolic merch, so you can get a shambolic hoodie, you can get a shambolic mug, you can get a shambolic t-shirt. And Adam Wilde, we have added a favorite for you. Please. Him naked. Uh, please. <laughs> it is not Adam's uh, Aaron Andrews collection. 
PJs. She hasn't reached out to me yet. I tagged her several times and said, can I be a model? <laughs> and I don't what? know why Aaron. And also, you know what? The New Jersey Devils didn't react uh, much to it either. <laughs> and I am a little upset that neither of them wanted to be a part of what I thought was a fantastic run. I think they might still be grumpy about the hoodie thing. The hoodie thing. That we made fun of their fucking the hoodies. Devils? And we yeah. made well, it was look. a stupid jersey, and it was hilarious, and we were just goofing on them. Yeah. yeah. And we came Are they, Were the devils mad at us? No, for I that? don't know. Oh, I okay, Adam, on the screen, as you can see, we have some new merch inspired by your oh. favorite thing in the world. So Eye sticking? Wait, is this the... Is this the, the <laughs> oh, hang on. I'm hit. Hang on. Hey. There you go. Hey. So it's high uh-huh. sticking... And it's history. So for everybody listening, you can go on sdpnshop.ca and you can type in key points t-shirt. And the key points are high sticking and history and nothing else. (laughs) We now have a key points shirt that says high sticking and history. I just want you to remember that the NHL does have a graphics department and they can put out precisely (laughs) one slide per year. I really can't (laughs) believe they did that again. Oh my! I think they know. I think they know. No, I think they're fucking lazy. When we, when we, when we torched alan walsh for the the mark andre fleury sword thing I years ago when i, I called have. him he's like oh i know who you are you're from the steve dangle podcast and i was like yeah and he's like he's like i remember you know the sword bit and i was like yeah what did you how did you feel about that he's like ah, i thought it was fucking hilarious <laughs> and he showed us a bit uh he sh- i i've talked about him before and i didn't remember and he's like yeah yeah so uh, one of my clients showed me that yeah, it's you funny how that stuff gets me. around. Oh, yeah. yeah, they know. I did not. Uh, we also have, last thing I'll mention out of our, our shop, uh, we have our holiday gear. It still sits in there because of the holiday season. This is my one of my favorite things in our entire shop. Adam, you don't have the mug right now, do you? Was it a Christmas mug? Oh, yeah, the upstairs. Christmas ah, mug. Shit. That's okay. It's okay. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't tell you to bring it. Anyways, so we have a we have a Christmas mug, it's and it's the best. The, it's the three of us. I'm a snowman. Steve's an elf, and Adam's a reindeer, and it's very happy, and we're all smiling, and it's very Christmassy. Uh, go check it out in this shop at uh, stvunshop.ca. I have a uh, what is it like Steve Dingleberry's Christmas <laughs> sweater. <laughs> I was going to wait till December to wear it, but maybe I'll wear it next year. Oh, where's your Steve? There we have a Steve Dingleberry's. <laughs> yeah, I got I got the powder blue one. So, to be extra, <laughs> yeah, I got that one. To be extra merry. I love that. <laughs> it's it, 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 our holiday merch. Is it kind of reminds fun. me of the Mean Girl scene where they're all dressed up and yeah. they're doing the dance. It's like Steve's version of it. That's me. <laughs> it's Steve Dangleberry's. Dangleberry's. Not Dingleberry's. Because Dingleberry's would be a little too on the nose. It'd be poo. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Dangleberry. Can we can we put out a sweater the 12 Steves of Christmas and it's just 12 Steve faces? Oh, that's right? such a good idea. Right? Yeah. Jesse, do it immediately. Uh, do everything. All right. Do it. <laughs> we'll get to work. Did you work hard on that? Don't give a shit. Here's a new idea. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, That's what the so, money is for. <laughs> we got we got a lot of fun stuff. I think our holiday gear is some of my favorite <sighs> stuff, and it's the holiday season. So go enjoy. We also got a socks version of the SDP and holiday socks. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> we can get to some questions here. Let's do it. Oh, if you'll give me a second to bring it up, fucking Jesse, needing uh, a second. Uh, let's see. Let's see what the Bills are doing. Uh, there are the now. no games today in the NHL. Mm-hmm. And most teams are playing Friday, Saturday, back-to-backs. And I hope you're all ready for some truly shit hockey. Oh, yeah. Because... Why are uh, they doing this? <laughs> that's such what a good point. What are they doing? Dude, they're going to eat a <laughs> bunch of turkey today. Like, a bunch of players are probably going to travel. Oh, I guess because they went up Thanksgiving. And they have the day off. Like, how many players do you think went out last night? Yeah, no. And they're going to do nothing all day today. And then they're going to go directly into back-to-backs a lot of them with travel, the quality of hockey Friday and Saturday is going to be shambolic. Yeah. Ah, there it is. There it is. All right. Take the over. Uh, first question. This Ooh. comes from a man who has surpassed Steve in one of Steve's greatest uh, uh, goals in life. His goal, Steve Dangle's goal, is to be the biggest James Reimer fan. Uh, this this Twitter user John thirty four Myra has surpassed Steve. Oh my! John God. has a James Reimer tattoo. Oh, Something Steve Dangle so doesn't weird. have. It's the James Reimer pose with the kiss in the glove and pointing it at 
God for helping him win a hockey. So John asks, ask Steve if you would ever get one of his favorite players tattooed, like my rhymer one. Yeah, <laughs> that's my incredible. Helps. Look no. at that. That's awesome, dude. That's a sick tattoo. That's a sick that tattoo. is sick. Yeah, uh, Steve, would you ever get a tattoo of a player? No, I wouldn't get a tattoo of. A, I don't want to get a hockey tattoo. As weird as that sounds, um, your whole life is already hockey. Yeah, your life is a tattoo. Yeah. Okay. You asked about the loon, and I, I, I apologize to whoever asked that question because I feel like I didn't give a very good answer. It was Adam. It was Adam. No, I, I thought it was someone. I else. did ask about it. Yeah. So someone was like, "Oh, why a loon?" And oh, mm-hmm. anyway. So it's it's a because <laughs> I like shooting them in the off season. Ha <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> ha! No, it's no, so it's Canadiana. It's peace. It's tranquility. Um, I like the idea of the lion and the loon because I think that describes me in some ways when I yell. I am a lion and a loon. Um, but also, uh, it's a nod to the lucky loony for Team Canada. And it's a nod to my grandpa because he, I forgot to say this part. Um, he uh, got hit by uh, his ship uh, in World War II, got hit by a depth charge and it sunk. And he had to get to the beach and he got a piece of shrapnel from it. Um, it was. Uh, the, about the size of a loony. Huh. And okay. he had it from about 1942 until 1997 when they removed it. Yeah, because they probably couldn't remove it. They couldn't because they were worried it would paralyze them. And wow. then technology got better and they're like, ah, you're fine. And they took it out. Wow. And he never uh, had to have an awkward conversation at airport security ever again. There you go. Steve, you should be embarrassed for not being the biggest James Reimer fan. That's, that's the point. I, I'm, I'm happy to be number two because it means I'm the shit. <laughs> all right this one's from frank uh adam we've had this request over the last couple weeks uh as you've been ramping up your devil's fandom mm-hmm. is there a chance you would do a dfr a devil's fan reaction i mean I, I think i would for sure i think the problem i have is that i wake up at 4 30 in the morning to do the morning show if oh yeah was, you never mentioned oh, that. if there was ever oh. if there was ever a thing where i wasn't doing a uh-huh. uh, morning show i think i just do a lot I would do like just singular videos and things, not like my own channel. I would put it on an STPM. But you should. Be, it's really easy. I don't. That's like not what we're talking about. Yeah. Would you do a one-off DFR? Hell yeah, I would. Hell Everyone yeah. just when thinks they can do what I do. When, when, when are you doing it? One day, just, if I'm not at Virgin Radio, oh I will do a God. DFR. All just right. do He's it. He's dodging the question. It's easy. It takes no talent. Next Any question from Sarah. I know it. that this that's is from not Sarah. true. Sarah. Did you know that SDPN legend Jaken Smallwood is sixth in U Sports scoring? Hell Let's yeah, go, Jaken! He's Fuck a really yeah. good. He's a he's a fucking player, and he's in all the NHL games. Yeah, like I love <laughs> I love seeing be. people draft him. I think that's so sick. Yeah. Um, Who's he with? A nice guy too. Who's he with? U of Alberta. Are they cool? Do we like them? Twenty two points in fourteen games for U of Alberta. He's basically Connor McDavid at U of Alberta. Uh, second in scoring on that team is Josh Prokop. Any relation to Luke, the Predators draft? I don't know. Wonder. Hmm. All right. It's a, it's a unique last name. This comes from Quintessa on Twitter. Start mac and cheese, bench mashed potatoes, cut stuffing. That's their rankings of the start oh. one, bench one, cut one. What are your rankings mac of and- mac and cheese, mashed potatoes, and stuffing? Oh, Man, oh man! Okay, now is it the type of mac and cheese that has those weird, crunchy, fucking pieces of celery in it? Because if you're doing what? that, oh yeah, you go ha- to prison. Yeah, you need to go to jail. Stop that. Oh, I should also shout out uh, Robert Malloy, who was the original uh, poster of the question, and Quintessa was just responding to it. But I'm sorry, who was that? Robert Malloy. Never heard of them. I think in this scenario, it's your perfect of each dish. It's your ideal of mashed potatoes. Your of, ideal, okay. Of like mac that. and cheese, oh, of tough. cut stuffing. It's not whatever you get. Do condiments and sauces apply? It's yes. your ultimate. You yes. are allowed to dress it up however you'd like it. Right, because I feel like with the existence of stuffing and mashed potatoes, the existence of gravy is implied. Mm-hmm. Yes, you are allowed to dress it up however you'd like it. It is the dish. <sighs> It is being served to you in ideal form. Where are you ranking? What are you cutting? Benching? Starting? Man! It's a hard one. Happy Thanksgiving. I, I got I got it. Oh, 
You go. Can I go? Okay, so I've never... If, if it's my idealized mac and cheese, it's the one you bake in the oven with the big squiggly pasta, and it's got three different types of cheeses on it. It's a bit crunchy on the top and smooth and silky mm, cheese creamy. underneath. You know what I'm talking about? The stuff that you... Yeah, baby. Mm. Sign me up. And that cheese, when it's hardened up a little bit, so good. Yeah, and you put it on a burger. Oh. Just kidding. Stop that shit. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. Yes, there is. So I think you're doing mac and cheese to start. Hmm. Now, I'm basing this... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to base my next decision because all three of these are elite foods. So mm-hmm. this is what makes this so hard. I'm going to base the next one on the best version of this I've ever had because a lot of people fuck up stuffing. Your box stuffing is... I think stuffing's got to be in the bird. Uh, I think it's got to be baked for six hours just like the bird is. It can be so elite and so mediocre. And it, yeah, it, it, so like... And people, you know, the thing is people are like very particular about their stuffing. I'm very particular about mine and... My family stuffing is elite. It is really good. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go because we do sourdough and it's big and it's thick mm-hmm. and it's big chunky. So I'm, I'm saying stuffing on the bench and I'm sitting mashed potatoes and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Most people, even worse than stuffing, fuck up mashed potatoes. It's got the lowest success rate. It does. And I don't know why. People really fuck mac, mac and cheese up, though. They do, but not, well, and if we're idealizing it, I guess, at, like, I don't know why people put vegetables in mac and cheese. Stop it. Or anything. <laughs> it's mac and cheese. Yeah. I agree. It's in the name. It's in the name. Leave it alone. Exactly. I'm with you. But I think, uh, on the whole, if you're at someone else's Thanksgiving, and someone else has made the, the, the potatoes, I think most of the time, uh, you're going to have somebody mess it mm. up. They're either too runny. Or they got that thick shit in it, or they didn't use enough butter. Chunks, they didn't put chives, or you could put jive, chives or green onions in. Either in this, is good. In this scenario, the dish you are receiving is your ideal mashed potatoes. This isn't your grandma fucking it up. Oh, oh hey, this hey, is hey, settle down. This hey, is settle down. This isn't Nona. This is Nona. This is no. Oh, hey, there, hey, there's hey, no, what's the matter for there's you? No, there's no fingernails in this. Oh, ew. Oh, yeah, oh, fingernail didn't come off in this. Oh, yeah. No hairs. No, oh, no little hairs in it either. They they served it perfectly. Is that is that the list you're going with, Adam? Your start bench cut? Are you confirmed? Oh, okay. On if your it's I- the best mashed potatoes yes, I've ever it had. It is the best you've ever had. Mashed potatoes are getting on the bench. I'm cutting stuffing. Ah, oh, he switched it! He switched it! The best ones I've ever had. But I'll tell you, the chances of you getting good potatoes, like people who say they can do potatoes right. well... Most of them are liars. Yeah. That's not what's happening here. Though. You're right. You're right. I don't want to agree with Adam because we all came dangerously close to seeing his balls this week. But <laughs> he... And what are you talking about? That's every week for is, you guys. That's true. Adam what? is correct. Wow. That is the correct order. You start my mom's macaroni and cheese. And right now you're like, you start macaroni and cheese? That's ridiculous. You haven't had my mom's. You shut your dirty mouth. And you don't talk about Clementina like that ever again. All right? <laughs> Clementina's mac and cheese. And here's what you do. Not a lot. Mm-hmm. You don't overdo it. Mm-hmm. It's offensive. Just a little bit and you stir it in. Ketchup. In the mac and cheese. Oh, just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Are you eight? Yes. I ate yeah, are you nah. asking him? macaroni and of cheese. Course he is. Uh, I also, and it was fucking delicious. I also like ketchup on things. Right? Yes, it's delicious. I, I don't like a lot of it. Mm-hmm. A little bit. You don't? Yeah, just a little bit. On your eggs, I don't like... I, you can ruin your eggs with ketchup. Ketchup on eggs is delicious. It is. But yes. you put a little bit. Yes, a tiny bit. Elite. Too I, much ketchup on anything. You know what I can't it, stand? Um, and, and at my wedding, Natalie's sister, we gave her shit for this, no. did this. No! Fro- remember the fries? Remember the fries? and Because I served oh, it on the food? yeah. She, her, her sister at the end of the night just put ketchup on all no! of the fries. And she's like, what? Everybody likes it like that. And everybody's like, ah, nobody likes no. it like that. You fucking ruined it. <laughs> Lord, what are you doing? No. <laughs> That's not what I thought you were going to say. No, what did you think I was going to say? My third dating anniversary with SL. She, we went to the keg and I very couldn't afford the keg, but I loved her. Good for you. Ketchup on her steak. <gasps> I should have broke up. Don, with it's right Trumpian. There. I, I He's known for that. I should have just broke Does up. she still do that? That's fine. No. Hey, no, it's not. Hey, every, no. everybody out there who's a steak aficionado, steak is just burger. Same shit. Hey, it's the same animal. Settle down. 
down. The same, same with the Oh, down. wow. No, we took a different part of the cow. It's a different thing. Nah, steak's just a fucking burger. Uh, you put ketchup on it. Put, uh, I'll, put, I'll put ketchup, uh, pickles, and then I'll put it in a bun. Uh, I'm going to eat it. I hate it. It's a burger. Oh, it hurt my ears. Like, same, tastes the same shit. You, Adam, you and I need to get stilts and beach us here. I know. Just this stupid. Is, that's awful. I need it. Yeah. Ooh. That is the also, worst while I'm here, four goals, not a hat trick anymore. Wow. I just remember that. Pizza. Okay. Fork and spoon. Who are you fucking <laughs> tall Travis Yost? What is this shit? Yeah, no, Travis. tall Drew, tall Drew, oh, tall producer, producer Drew. Well, and he is tall. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, no. You could put ketchup on a steak. Stop being elitist. What about being you're closer an, you're to an the elitist, sun? Makes you're your an elitist. Terrible. Speaking. You're an elitist cuck. If you if you <laughs> if you're against <laughs> if you're against ketchup on steak, you're you're one of those Trudeau yeah, lefties, aren't no, you? I bet That's poli we politicize I, ketchup. I bet you like I bet you like the government right now. <laughs> can I can I ask you guys a question? <laughs> How is ketchup the only thing that there is not a luxury version of it for yet? Like, I've seen restaurants there try is. to make their own. Fancy ketchup. It's but if you go to, like, we went to a, a really fancy steakhouse last, last year in the winter. Do you guys remember that? Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes. And when you get fries at this very fancy, because steak frites, right? Mm -hmm. And they are the best fries and at this particular one. Mm -hmm. They bring up Heinz ketchup. There are. I used, to, I used to be cheap enough to buy Hunt's ketchup Ooh. and French's ketchup. Mm -hmm. But they're not a whole lot different. There is no, no ketchup that is truly like, you know, like there's like, there's no. Um, they try smoke. It's ketchup. like Volkswagen and Audi, or or you know what I mean. There's, there's no, no Mercedes Benz of ketchup. Yeah. yeah, isn't there a market for that? But there are seventy five mustards. There are, there are. And yeah. Dijon is the is you get elite mustards. Yeah. Um, start macaroni and cheese. If we're going with the best you've ever had, I've ever had. If we're going on average, it's bench stuffing. Yeah, on average. Cut mashed potatoes. If we're going best I've ever had, bench mashed potatoes. What? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what is... If, you, if you're going average, the best... best if, that's, if we're going average, I think on average, stuffing is better than mashed potatoes. But okay, the best, okay, but the best, okay, okay, but the yeah, best yes, yes, yes. mashed potatoes. So you guys have the, the exact stuff. same thing. Yeah, yes. oh, okay. yeah, yeah. It's like it, like it's the mashed potatoes get like a, a ninety eight potential, but the chances of yes. you are reaching it very slim. But in this scenario yes. that we've laid out, you're getting That's mashed right. potatoes. Like Jesse's drafted you, yeah. and you're playing really well. Uh, it's uh, it's a uh, in NHL, an undersized, high scoring player you pick in the third round. That's, there you go. That's mashed potato. Jesse, what about you? SDA basically. I'm gonna reserve judgment. What? I didn't think about it. You okay, can't. What do you mean you gotta I think it's about the end, it? It's the end of the show, Jesse. Uh, there's you guys. The You're question, not waiting till Monday for the, this. I'm not. I'm not giving an answer ever. It's. It, I'm. I'm holding back. You guys gave your answers. You thought it well. I thought it was good enough. Adam, getting angry. We don't again. need. He deserves it. That's it. I, mean, I thought we we're done. Do you understand what he's done in the last ten minutes? You guys gave your answers. You called you you said ketchup on steak is fine. You called steaks hamburgers, and then you won't even answer the question. I thought you, you guys. I thought, I thought you got you guys gave well thought out answers for me to just be like ah macaroni, uh, mashed potatoes, and stuffing. Like that'd be unfair to you. guys. I hope there's a hair in everything you eat for the next month. That'd be unfair. I'm I'm, I'm just, not thankful. I'm not Thanksgiving for your decisions. I'm trying the to last be considerate 10 minutes, of your answers that were well thought out and I appreciate it. I hope Waffles eats your sweater. <laughs> <laughs> she would do that. <laughs> she, she wouldn't eat it. She would just chew on it slightly. Do you, do you guys yeah. remember the Santa Claus? <laughs> Like, What's Santa Claus? Remember the movie, the Tim Allen movie? Oh yes, he looked. That sweater looks like the sweater that Tim Allen always makes fun of the new stepdad for wearing. This is this is you don't disrespect the notorious B.I.G. This is, is a Kooji sweater. <laughs> no, it's a Tim Allen sweater. How yeah, dare no, you? Not Tim Allen. It's the guy Judge. His name's Judge something. And it, the guy's first name is literally Judge. I don't know. Eighties movie actor. Anyway, long story short, right. let's get into I'm it. I'm trying to watch the Bills and Lions. That's, that's you're trying to. <laughs> that's why are you trying over. to watch that game? You know that's who's going to win that game. That no, it's tight. It's fourteen, fourteen, and they're just reviewing a Lions All TV. Right. Let's get to the next. Let's, let's play the thing. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and they just stop playing the game after the third quarter because it's Jesse is running the NFL. It's the second quarter. I'm Whatever. so offended by Shut the last up. ten minutes. Shut up. Answer, you, answer I thought you guys gave good answers. You gave a shit one. That's okay. Fuck your Thanksgiving. It's ruined. <laughs> All of you. I hope it's awful. <laughs> Just like mine. <laughs> Steve. The Steve Dangle Podcast.
Powered by Sports Interaction. Get it Sportsbook. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.